Hey, great friends. What's going on? Today is Wednesday. And before we get started on today's show, I want to mention a few things to you. First of all, um, I hope everybody's going to join us tonight. We are going to be at the Comedy Store, La Jolla. Browner's going to be there. I'm coming down. Jason Law is performing. He's going to go on stage about 8.30. I've been hearing from a lot of people that are coming. So come on down. It's only $10. And the first 10 people that find me at the door, I will buy your way in for only 10 bucks. I, I don't want anybody to have freebies tonight. I want everybody to pay so we can support our boy Lawhead. First 10 people that find me and say, great friends, I'll buy your ticket tonight. Okay. Comedy store tonight, 8 PM. I'll be standing out front. Okay. That's one, two. Let me run through our sponsors real quick. Cause I want everybody who's watching and listening to please support our sponsors. I'm going to hustle. Here it goes. One manscaped manscaped.com. Use our promo code. Great friends. You'll save 20% in free shipping. I told you the story that last week I bought six pairs of those Manscaped underwear. They're the best. Got them six pairs for 60 bucks. Use the promo code. Then they hit me with buy three more, get 50%. I bought six pairs for 60 bucks. Manscaped, uh, all of their products, when you sign out, use our promo code, great friends, you're going to save. So that's one. Two, DraftKings. We're getting ready here now for the Super Bowl this upcoming Sunday. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use our promo code GREATFRIENDS. You get 56 to 1 odds. So you bet $5 on either team. If you win, you get $280 in free bets. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use our promo code GREATFRIENDS. Glad to have these sponsors along with us, including 7 Mile Casino, 7milecasino.com. You're looking for something fun to do this week or this weekend. 7 Mile Casino, just seven minutes from downtown San Diego. That's just south. And no smoking. And Blackjack Poker, Sammy's Restaurant and Bar, you're going to love it. 7 Mile Casino, 7milecasino.com. Uh, Corky's Pest Control. I mentioned Corky's birthday yesterday. I had a really great conversation with Cork. He's doing great. Uh, still very, you know, got to take care of yourself. You know, you get a couple of years older and you got to be careful about COVID. Cork, we love you. We appreciate you. And we're saying to everybody who's watching and listening, you have a pest control problem. Corky's got pest control solutions. Call 1-800-901-1102. You saw Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services yesterday. He had a really, really interesting buyer beware for all of us yesterday about um, refinancing your house and using the cash and gimmicks. Don't make a move in real estate without calling our guy, Gary Cooper, 858-376-1299. That's 858-376-1299. You call Gary Cooper before you do anything in the world of real estate. Tory Holistics. Um, if you go to Tory Holistics website, well, the better thing to do is go to our website, kaplanandcrew.com. Click on Tory Holistics. That's where you're going to get the promo code. The promo code right now is Love Bowl through the month of February. A little combination of what's going on with, uh, with Valentine's Day and what's going on with the Super Bowl. Love Bowl, you'll save 20%. While you're there at Tory Holistics, make sure you ask your representative about HVGC, Hellman Valley Growers Company. I always like to brag about these guys, former U.S. Marines, they were in the most violent place on the planet, the Helmand Valley province in Afghanistan, came back. We're all dealing with problems with PTSD. One guy said, I'm using cannabis and boom, an idea was sparked. And now they're in the cannabis business and working with the federal government to make sure that cannabis is an acceptable form of treatment for PTSD. It's a great product. It's a great cause. When you go to Tory Holistics and you're saving 20%, ask for the HVGC products. And lastly, let me mention I Thrive MD. We'll talk to one of the docs a little bit later on. You know, we're doing a whole series this year about men's health. We're using our partners to, to be, uh, you know, involved in all of this. I mentioned my friend last week, intravenous vitamins, testosterone, NAD. Guys, you want to get energized. It may not always be low testosterone. It could be something else going on in your body. And instead of testosterone, they decide to go with NAD. Um, you'll talk to the docs there. We'll talk to one of the docs today. Dr. Max Say is going to stop by. This is about your health and your longevity. Make an appointment, ithrivemd.com slash Kaplan, 858-240-1497, 858-240-1497. All right, listen, we got a big, big show. Tomorrow, I'm going to be on Radio Row. Friday, Alex is going to be there. So today is going to be our last day, you know, with all of us in our respective studios. We got a big show coming your way. Let's start it right now. Hey, great friends. Yo, yo, yo. It is a Wednesday afternoon here on Kaplan and crew along with Grande and the Brown Man. And we come to you from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. Glad to have everybody along. 
everybody who's listening on the radio. Yo, ESPN 1090 listeners, what's going on out there? By the way, um, since we converted 1090 to ESPN 1090, man, oh man, when I'm in my car, we sound so much better, the radio station. I mean, this morning I was listening to Mike Greenberg. Now, look, Mike Greenberg is not everybody's cup of tea. Okay, but when you talk about consistency and a guy whose name you know and he's been there and you see him on TV, Mike Greenberg this morning, I was listening to him on the radio, sounded great. I love the fact that we have now converted to ESPN 1090 and we got the ESPN National Morning Show and then into Greeny and then into Rich Eisen, who, of course, is covering the Super Bowl, you know, as well as anybody else because he's got all the connections at the NFL Network, et cetera. So. It's just great to hear 1090 sounding the way it does with the ESPN programming and then Rich Eisen. And then we pull into like Arash Markazi around noon, Scott Farrell, who is already up at the Super Bowl. I saw him last night at the Laker game. So when Scott Farrell was at the Laker game last night, he saw me pointing right at him up on the scoreboard. There I was pointing it at Scott Farrell. And then we take over here this afternoon. So uh, glad everybody's listening on 1090. For those of you that are with us on YouTube, hey, look, we're just getting rolling. Things start to build and build and build. Um, lots of people already in our chat. Get involved. Get involved in the conversation uh, or talk about whatever you want during the, the whole show, which a lot of people do. Um, tonight, we'll be on television, Channel 4 San Diego, which is our home base, part of the Cox Your View Network. And then, of course, you guys know the story. You can get us anytime you want on all the different audio podcast platforms. Grande. Brown man, good Wednesday afternoon, fellas. Um, tomorrow, I will be at Radio Row. I'm going solo. I don't know if I'm really going to make it on. Alex was like, yesterday, he sent me a text. He's like, yo, for real, for real, for real. Do you need me to go with you and hold your hand? Or can you handle things on your own? I'm going to try. Okay, I'm going to try and handle things on my own. We'll get reports as the day goes on from Radio Row in LA at the convention center. And, uh, and then we're going to be fully immersed in Super Bowl coverage. So Grande, Brown Man, good afternoon, fellas. How we doing? I sent multiple texts. Hey, are you for real, for real, for real? I texted Browner one of those yesterday. I texted you one of those yesterday. And the only person I didn't believe was you, Scott. So once I got done talking to you about it, I immediately called Josh from Charity Stripe. And I was like, bro, can you be our on-site producer tomorrow and make sure that this knucklehead gets on air? And uh, he will be there. I don't know what time, if he's going to be there right at eight with you, but he will be there for the show. And, uh, you know, we have three interviews lined up. He's he's pretty ecstatic to help. So I'm confident this is that there will be computers for you set up. And I am zero confident into how it will sound when you're sitting across from somebody directly talking to a computer. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how it's going to go either, but I knew this. Um, I borrowed from my daughter, her computer. Mm -hmm. I said to Alex, Hey, when you went up to LA on Sunday to test all of this stuff, you took the extra camera, you took the extra microphone. Mm -hmm. Can you give it to Browner? Who's going to meet me tonight? Browner, you still in tonight, right? So far so good. All right. Browner and me tonight at the comedy store in La Jolla to support our boy, Jason Lawhead. And I've been sending texts to all my friends. I've been putting it out on social media. The best thing I can do is say to everybody who's listening on radio and watching on YouTube, uh, for those of you that are watching on TV, it's probably a little too late. But tonight, Jason Lawhead, the comedy store, I was talking to Lawhead last night because you know he came over about 9.30. He's done refereeing games. He's still in his official's outfit. He got a towel around his neck. He comes over to drop off the car that I had lent him, right? And, and I said to Lawhead, I said, tell me the story here. Of, of how we can help you. And he actually told me that if they get 150 paid patrons or paid audience members tonight, that's a total of like $1,500 because it's $10 per. No freebies tonight, okay? I could get everybody freebies. I'm not, I'm paying for them. In fact, Browner, you'll love this. The first 10 people that find me at the comedy store tonight at 8 p.m., 8, 8.05, I'll be standing right out front I will buy the first 10 people that come to me and say, Kaplan, great friends. I will buy your $10 ticket. I, I Look, I'm just trying to help my boy Lawhead Damn. make some money here. 18 if mil he net gets, worth. Dude, if he gets, if he gets, you ready for this? If he gets 150 people in the door tonight, he gets a bonus of 250 bucks. I don't know what they pay him to, per, to perform tonight. Why are you putting tonight? his business out there like that? Because yeah, here's why. Here, here's why. Here's why. I'm serious. Here's why. 
because it's a bonus. It's above and beyond what they pay him. And I'm, I told the story yesterday with Lawhead on the air. First, he had his car towed. Then he had to go to the sheriff's department to get the, the you know, way to get it out of pound. He had to get it by five o'clock. It was going to be another like $300 till the next day. The guy is a, he's a comedian and a referee, you know? So I want to support the dude. So first I'm going to pay for the 10, the first 10 people that find me. And then I'm hoping that we can get a bunch of people there tonight so that the comedy store sees that Lawhead is a draw. And I want to help him make that $250 bonus. So that's all I'm trying to say. I don't mean to put anybody's business on the air. I'm just trying to help a friend make a couple bucks. And I'm inviting all the great friends tonight. Eight o'clock is showtime. Lawhead's got a great comedian from LA who's opening up for him. And then he's going to hit the stage about 8.30, 8.45. If we could get 150 great friends, and I'm paying for the first 10, if we can get 150 great friends to come on down, that would really help our boy Lawhead. Brown man, I know putting people's business on the air isn't exactly the greatest thing in the world. Okay, we're not talking about thousands or millions of dollars here. But still, the poor guy got his car towed. Then, then the guy's car broke down. He was going to have to pay the $1,200 to have his car fixed. Then he was going to lose the three or $400 he was going to make from officiating games that he couldn't get to because he didn't have a car. I'm just trying to help a brother out here. Hey, man, let me tell you something about business. If you tell him my business, my financial business, and it's in the millions, you can talk all you want, okay? You tell him my financial business, and it's in the 50s or the hundreds, please be quiet. <laughs> That's kind of the rule I have. If I, reach, if I reach the millions, talk all you want. Go ahead. I chime in. But when we talking tens and twenties, maybe a hundred, Please be, please don't do that to me. Please don't. Fair do that. enough. Fair enough. Okay. But here's the thing. I don't think anybody listening and watching right now thinks like Lawhead on a Wednesday night at the comedy store in La Jolla is making millions of dollars. Well, okay? Yeah, no, of course not. So, so, so what I'm trying to do is say, look, this is a great friend to the show. He's a great partner to Browner on Browner and Lawhead Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday mm -hmm. night from six to 7 PM. He's a really, really great part of our ecosystem and great friends family. And when he's performing, if we can help him and we can help him make a few extra bucks and we can help him um, raise his profile locally on the comedy scene, I'm just asking everybody to come give a hand. Look, it's Wednesday night. It's a school night. OK, I'm going to miss my daughter's uh, basketball game. I got to get up super early tomorrow morning to drive up to L.A. I'm going to be in L.A. I won't get home to tomorrow night till 11, 12 o'clock. I mean, I I'm not trying to make it sound like you know, like I'm suffering hardly. I'm just saying that tonight's a school night and I'm willing to come on out on a Wednesday night to La Jolla to go support our boy Lawhead. I'm willing to buy the first 10 people that come find me. I'll buy your ticket to get in. Come on out and support. That's all I'm trying to say. And I'm trying to give you guys real honesty, real raw numbers. Like, I don't know what he gets paid for tonight, but if we can get the guy a, a bonus because he brought a lot of people in, good for us. Good for him. We're helping a, a great friend out. You know, that's all. You know who else needs a bonus? Who that? Russell Westbrook. Oh, dude. <clears throat> he needs a bonus. a bonus. He needs a bonus. He's making $44 million. He needs a bonus, really? He See how easy it is to tell somebody's business when it's in the millions? Mm -hmm. He's making $44 million. Everybody know that. Look, man, he needs help. He needs he needs like a psychologist because his confidence is shot. That's what's wrong with him. I think last night was the first because I always want to see the Lakers against big-name teams with big-name guys. Now the Bucks are the re they're the reigning champions. Giannis is two time MVP, so there's no shame in getting worked by him. That goes for AD, who just you know turtled. But watching them against a really really good team lets me know where they really are. His confidence is shot. There's nothing wrong with Russell Westbrook physically. His confidence is shot. Playing on this team, they've drained the confidence out of a very very confident guy who's now just playing confident, but you can clearly see it is not there. It is literally not there. And with Thursday coming being a trade deadline, and clearly there's some friction, it's going to be fireworks. I really believe the Lakers are going to make a lot of – I really believe the Lakers are going to make a big move. I really do. Mm -hmm. Listen, I was thinking about it today because I was – like I said, mentioned, I was listening to Mike Greenberg earlier today on ESPN Radio here on 1090, and I was thinking about it earlier – Russell Westbrook makes $44 million. James Harden makes $44 million. Well, that wouldn't happen. Well, I'm no. just asking, though. Would you do that? Would no. you swap trouble no. for trouble because no. it's the same dollar figure? No. Would you no. rather have James Harden on the Lakers or Russell Westbrook on the Lakers, Alex? 
Um, so tomorrow on Radio Row, uh, <laughs> when if it doesn't work, like if there's feedback on the mics, mm-hmm. the interviews are 10 minutes long. So we'll just let Scott and the interviewee go. And then me and, you know, that way there's no like delay and stuff. So if that goes, that's my solution. You just take the headphones off and talk to the person because the cameras and the mics are going to work just fine. Mm-hmm. So what does that have to do with Russell Westbrook and? Uh... Oh, why don't? What are you talking about? <laughs> wow! See, look at this guy. This guy. I'm, I'm I got gonna impl- yesterday. I'm just going to implement. I'm just going to implement the Browner thing. If you're talking about something that I don't want to talk about, I'll talk about something else. I'm just. Oh, if wow. that's the rule now, like if we're if we're talking if 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 you're talking about things I have no interest in, like whatever you're talking about with I think the Lakers, um, I'll talk about stuff I want to talk about, like. There you go. Red Bull uh, released their 2022 car today. We could talk about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm more than willing to talk about Super Bowl. Matt Stafford, mm-hmm. Joe Burrow. Um, we'll talk about Radio Row. I think Radio Row is exciting. But if you're going to talk to me about whatever you're talking about right now, I'll just lean back and let you guys handle it. All right. Well, that's time a rule out here now, right? Yeah. I don't right. care. I mean, so, Brown, oh, once Browner oh, once Browner, oh, once okay. Browner took, the, yeah. took the liberty to hold the mic. <laughs> And Yo. kick it, so kick it back. Yeah. <laughs> Once you know, Browner took the liberty, that's it, yeah, man. We were talking about something, and then oh Brown, and then God. we're talking about Lawhead show, and Browner's like, I don't really care about this. Let's talk about Russell Westbrook. No, no, you so, know what he did uh, yesterday? No, <laughs> let me tell you what he did yesterday. We were talking about Weddle yeah. and how <laughs> Weddle was really taking his shots at the Charger organization, uh-huh. which by the way, Alex, when you posted on Twitter yesterday, exploded the the oh the God. Weddle discussion that we were all having. Yeah. I mean, you're right. It did explode. Um, thousands and thousands and thousands of views. I, I mean, way that, more, yeah. th- way more than we normally even really get, frankly. Um, and right in the middle of all that, like this whole exciting story, Weddle retirement comes out of retirement, goes to the Rams, finds himself in the Super Bowl, is back to being one of the leaders of the team, one of the most likable and respected guys on the team. And and we're talking about his shots at the Charger franchise, and Browner's like, "Yeah, I'm not. I'm yeah. not interested. I'm just yeah. not into it at all in any yeah. way. So I don't really care what you guys are talking about." Yeah, it's <laughs> it's the whole kick. <laughs> that is exactly what you said. And you know, no. in this in this particular instance that you guys are talking about, I think you were talking about Russell Westbrook. Um, yeah, I, I just don't. Choose, I don't want to talk about it. So wow, I, wow. I talked. Listen, you want to hear my thoughts on it? Taco Tuesday, silverscreenroll.com. I did a post game podcast. You ain't going to hear me talk. I'm done with them. Okay. Let me in all seriousness, something. in all seriousness, <laughs> I'm so done with this team. God, I'm so done. I hope they don't trade Russell Westbrook and I hope they finish below 500 and I hope they fire Rob Polinka because he deserves it. Because he had a championship yeah. team 16 months ago. He had a championship team. I get more energized when I lay down. I said it yesterday. He had a yeah, championship yeah, team 16 months ago. And what has he done since? But tear it down and turn it into this. Whatever the hell yeah. that was last night, whatever that was last night, yeah. is not good basketball. Okay, let me say this. We will go deeper into what happened last night. And the reason I think it's more relevant than normal is because with the Super Bowl being in L.A. and the Lakers hosting the defending world champions, and the last time that Milwaukee and L.A. played – Giannis went for 47. There was no LeBron. This time there was a LeBron and Giannis still went for 44 points. The Lakers, to say what Kendrick Perkins says on ESPN, they stink. And it doesn't matter if they have LeBron and AD and Russ. It doesn't matter what their record is when all three are playing. The Lakers, as LeBron had to admit yesterday, because here was the thing. When the game was over last night, I was sticking around. I wanted to see the post-game press conferences. I wanted to see Russell Westbrook, who, by the way, in my opinion, has now aired out Frank Vogel, and this thing's going to get ugly between the two of them. And then LeBron comes to the post-game press conference, and he tells everybody that we're no good as well. So we'll we'll go deeper into what happened last night with the Lakers. So stay tuned for that because this is becoming a big story, a bigger story now. And thank you, Browner, for bringing that up. Now, Browner, tonight, when can I expect to see you at uh, at the Comedy Store tonight in La Jolla? That's a great question. I have to attend to my responsibilities and I will be there. So I cannot give you a uh, time period. I will be there, if not a little bit after eight, right uh, right at eight, maybe. Okay, listen, I want to just say to everybody who's listening right now, you're going to see me and Browner. I we'll definitely stand- will not make it by the free ticket time. 
Well, if you make it there by call it eight, eight, 10, somewhere in that neighborhood, you and me could be standing out front. And the first 10 people that find us and say, great friends, I will buy your ticket for the show tonight. And it's look, I'm not doing anything crazy, right? It's $10 to get in, which costs me a hundred bucks, but I really want to invite people to come on down. And if you don't get a free ticket from me, you'll buy a ticket for $10. You'll support our boy. You'll Lohan, survive. Okay? You'll, you will survive. You will. Absolutely. It's a latte so, at this point. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, uh, okay, look, excited. Um, Alex, you say you don't want to talk about your Lakers, but I'm going to ask you to talk about them in the next segment. So stay tuned for that, everybody, because I think we need to hear the LeBron post game. I definitely know we need to hear the Russ post game. And again, I think this game last night was extra relevant because you have the Super Bowl in town and you have Giannis and the defending world champs in town. And people who are from out of town who were lucky enough to find their way to get tickets wanted to see LeBron versus Giannis, and it turned into a disaster. And it is like the national talking point uh, starting early this morning. So we'll get to all of that coming up. Alex, set up today's show, though. We have a we have a great show coming up today. Why don't you set it up for us so everybody knows where we're headed, if you don't mind? Um, yeah, uh, we have coming up, we have Aztec for Life. And one of our favorites from Radio Row, we have Kyle Turley. He'll be from Radio Row. Um, we are talking. I feel like I'm missing someone. When you asked me that, I was like, I'm definitely missing someone today. Okay. And I can't yeah. remember who. Uh, but we are talking to, I believe, Dr. Max A from My Thrive. We have a right. Bengals correspondent today talking about the Bengals. And I'm definitely missing somebody today. Okay. So, hey, we got a, I got a message yesterday from a gentleman by the name of Craig Mizrak. And Craig has been a longtime great friend. And Alex, I know you'll remember this, but a couple of years ago when the Chargers left, this is 2016, when the Chargers left, we were on the air at that time from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. And the 6 to 7 hour, somehow Mike Von Glickenhaus, the former general manager of 1090, the guy who actually ran the ship into the iceberg that had it sink the first time before Bill Hagen rebuilt the, the, the ship and then had it floating again. When Von Glickenhaus was running 1090. I remember him saying to me, we need you guys to go from six to seven. You shouldn't just go three to six. You should go three to seven. I said, okay, well, you're going to pay me 25% more. He said, no. So the chargers moved. And I was thinking to myself, what can we do to cover the entire league? And we had this concept, the great friends sports network, and we assigned individual NFL teams to correspondents. And so this guy, Craig Mizrak, was the Cincinnati Bengals correspondent because he was a lifelong Cincinnati Bengals fan. The guy is losing his mind. Absolutely losing his mind. He flew last week from, from San Diego to Kansas City so he could be there to root on his Bengals. And we're going to get a, a report slash, we're going to kind of get the, the, the vibe of what it is to be a Cincinnati Bengals fan, who, by the way, and I said this to you guys yesterday, the whole country is rooting for Cincinnati. You know, it's not like the Rams are villains the way people look at the Lakers or the Dodgers. It's just that they're L.A. and they went out and got a star quarterback and they added pieces as the year went on and they went all in and it's in their home stadium and it's in their hometown. Point being, America seemingly, based on every poll that you'll read out there, the country is rooting for the underdog and that's the Cincinnati Bengals, Browner. That's the deal. You told me them. yesterday that's not the case. And hey, listen, you people think they like the underdog until the underdog gets in the big dog ring and they get the doors blown off of them. I want to, I would, that's so many, there's so many after Super Bowl things I'm interested in, in terms of viewership, in terms of high point, in terms of halftime. Like, I, I'm so interested in the things that you will find out after the game than I am in the actual game because I really don't care about the outcome of it. <laughs> yeah, well, you don't have a dog in the fight, man. I understand. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, before we hit this first break, I want to mention to everybody, uh, Manscaped, the company out of Carlsbad, who I told you that when you buy their performance 4.0 package, you know, you get the lawnmower, which is, you know, you're shaving your chest, your pits, whatever the case may be. Um, they've got the ear and nose cleaner as well, which is awesome. But the underwear that comes in this package is the best underwear I've ever worn. So I went out to their website the other day, manscaped.com. I bought three pairs of underwear. I put in the promo code great friends and I saved 20% plus I get free shipping. Then as I'm checking out, they're like, yo, you want another three pairs for 50% off? So I said, yes. So I got six pairs 
for $60. Use the promo code GREATFRIENDS. Got 20% savings and got free shipping. Go to manscaped.com. I got a a message the other day from a listener who told me, hey, thanks for the discount code because I bought that performance 4.0 package. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for going and buying and using our promo code because it helps us. So manscaped.com, promo code is great, friends. Save 20% and free shipping. And we appreciate Manscaped being a part of the show. All right, let's get rolling here. We got Kyle Turley coming up. We got the, the craziness of Bengals fans coming up. We got Dr. Max A from iThrive who will be here. We got a great show. We're just getting rolling from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. This is Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man. Hey, great friends. What's going down? It is a, what is today? Wednesday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew along with Grande and the Brown Man. We're coming to you from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. SevenMileCasino.com is the website. Come on down, just seven minutes south of downtown San Diego. Blackjack poker over here in a smoke-free environment. Sammy's Restaurant and Bar over here. Great food, good stiff drink. You're going to have a lot of fun. Beautiful view of the Bay of Chula Vista. You're going to love it. Seven Mile Casino and SevenMileCasino.com. All right, before we get started, I want to just ask you guys, um, Alex, just one more time here, since we kind of include everybody who watches and listens in on, uh, on show business. Tomorrow, I will be on Radio Row from the L.A. Convention Center. In fact, I talked to our boy Craig Dato this morning. Dato went up today to go up to Radio Row, and he said he left this morning at 4.45 a.m. and got to the L.A. Convention Center at about 6.15. Like, he flew. There was no traffic. None at all. It's pretty good. I don't know that I'm leaving at 4.45 a.m. You should. Do you think so? All All it takes is one patch of traffic to tear everything up. Because once you hit a roadblock, it's gonna back up after that. So you, I mean, listen, it's like you either risk. you either get there early and right. be good, or deal with traffic and who knows what time you get there. Yeah, um, but if I left my house at say like five thirty, can I get to the convention? Se- well, can I get to downtown LA by seven thirty? No. Five. 5.30 a.m., you don't think I can get there in two, two and a half hours? All right, go ahead then. You don't think so, Playboy? Nah, Playboy, I don't think you can do that, Playboy. Why not, Playboy? You're taking the, you're taking the chance. You're putting the thing in your own hands, dog. You should. You might want to just go ahead and leave a little bit early. But I got parking. Like, I don't have to struggle to find parking. I have a parking pass for LA Live, you know? That's mm-hmm. that's a, a small perk of working for ESPN, although oh, every time LA I go cap. there, although every time I go there, I go to use my parking pass, and when I leave, they're like, oh, your parking pass doesn't work, $30. So I I actually sent a text today to the manager up at ESPN. I was like, yo, A, can I park there at the office? They're like, yeah. And I'm like, B, can somebody get my my parking card to work? So they said, I'm good now. I'm ready to roll. Nice. So um, I don't come on, 5.30. If I left my house at 5.30 in the morning, I can't get to L.A. by 7.30? What time do you think L.A. started rolling for work in the morning? I'd say 6, six? 15, 6 30. So by the time you're going to downtown Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. So I would say the amount of traffic that you are looking to hit, you're you're gonna hit traffic. If you leave at 5 30, you'll probably hit traffic around 6 40, 6 35. Mm-hmm. Where will I be? Let's see. Uh, uh here's what, how fast you drive. Here's what happened to me when I went on Sunday. Tell me. I left my house at 10 a.m. I left your house probably about 10 40. Mm-hmm. I got to like uh, where the Citadel is, the outlets that look like a castle. Yeah. Um, I got there by the time I from I don't know how long it took me to get there, but it was like no traffic. But when I got from there to get to downtown, mm-hmm. it was like another hour. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. All yeah. right. All right. So maybe I'll leave at five. I think you're good at five. Yeah, if I leave at because five, dude, you I get mean, there early, you know, you get some breakfast, you chill, no big deal. You yeah. get there late, you start panicking, bad things happen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, you're an early true. riser, anyways, dude. That's true. That is true. I am. Um. So, but but five is really early. I mean, for me to leave at five, five is, is, early. is really early. Plus, I also have like I got to schlep a whole bunch of crap with me. You know what I mean? I got two computers, two microphones, two cameras. Not to mention, besides what I need for this show. I got to bring all this radio equipment with me too because I got to broadcast from there later in the day. I mean, I got a lot of crap to schlep. Just go, just go to the studio. 
Well, okay, that's a question for you. Should I should I do ESPN from the ESPN studios or should I stay on Radio Row? No, go to the 100% studio. And do the studio. Why? Yeah. Why? Why do you guys say that? Because they they, they don't they don't care to be there. So why should you care to be there for that show? Yeah. Yeah. You may be right. Maybe I should just go into the ESPN studios. Like, why Why even bother with worrying about connection and microphones and noise? Right. And if they don't care to be at Radio Row, then just go across the street where you're parked. Well, when you say they don't care, I think the other guys on the radio don't care. But I think the management and people care. And I think the listeners kind of care. Well, then they should know. send somebody to set you up perfectly. So by the time yeah. you start the show, you should be firing on all cylinders. You know what, man? I like being self-contained. I used to not like being self-contained. But now I like to be self-contained. I'll give you an example. Last night I was uh, driving down the road. This is, um, I went to pick my daughter up at halftime of the Laker game last night. And I'm driving down the road. I turn over to Sirius Satellite Radio and I'm listening to the Mad Dog Radio Channel because I'm listening to our boy JT the Brick. Um, Browner, are you familiar with JT the Brick? Do you know who he is? Feeling you. No, wrong guy. Oh, wrong brick. Yeah, that's Vic the Brick. This is JT the Brick. Mm. This is the guy who comes on all the time on our show that you talk to, who he actually refers to you as Browner because he knows who you are, and he's got the Raider background behind him. Yeah, we talked to him a couple times. I know him. Yeah. So so JT the Brick and I are talking last night, and he's on Radio (laughs) Row, and I heard his interview with Stephen A. Smith, and it was a great interview. And I sent him a text. I said, hey, man, that was a really great interview. And he wrote me back. He's like, thanks. He sent me a picture of where he was broadcasting from. And he was broadcasting from a regular table in the middle of Radio Row. But nobody's even there because it's nighttime. And um, he works for Mad Dog on, on Sirius. And Mad Dog, Alex, you know how like they have those big giant yeah. sets for Fox and CBS and everything else? Mad Dog has one of these giant sets at Radio Row. JT's not on there. He, he's not up on the big set. He's, I don't really know all the details, but he was not particularly happy about it. And I don't want to put words in his mouth, but here's what I said to him. I go, dude, you got to look at this all differently. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, you choose not to be up on that set. You choose not to be separated from the real people. You're down on the real radio row. You're down there talking to the people. People can have access to you. They can hug it out. They can fist bump you, et cetera. You you're, that's why you're down there. Don't let them say that they didn't set you up up there. You tell them you didn't want to be up there. No, I'll put me up there. Yeah, that's kind of the way he felt too. Yeah, Look, uh, I'm with him. Yeah, I mean, because he's been up there already, mm-hmm. and because he's worked for them currently, mm-hmm. I'd be like, "Yo, what the hell?" Yeah, is anybody using it when he's on air? No. Yeah, that's, that's even worse. Slap. Oh, I know. He was pissed. That's so. like Browner calling him Vic to his face. Right. I know Browner. Like, like what? Poor guy felt insulted as it was, and now you're insulting him by calling him. Are you? Ex- you? Are you excited about going, Scott? Um, I was excited about going and I did tell you guys that the reason I wanted to go up there is because I had all this FOMO. But now that I'm thinking to myself, like, gosh, it's Thursday. I actually morning. have to do it. I got to go <laughs> schlep up there. I'm going to be up there literally all day. And you got to come back. Then I got to then after the show tomorrow night, then I'm going to get done. I'm going to go over to the NFL experience and do a whole bunch of stuff over there. And then by the time I get in my car and I come home, it, I probably won't leave L.A. till 10 o'clock. I won't be home till till midnight you, and you have to do the la stuff the espn la stuff i don't have to no I'm, I'm going because i got a lot of friends that come into every super bowl every year from all different parts of the country and they're all going to be there and i said i'll come up tomorrow and say hello to everybody and be around and you know i just now that i think about it you know maybe the better thing to do is just to sit here and just keep doing what we're doing where we go up to la uh on on zoom with our guys our correspondents up there i mean i don't go, really I'll, really I mean, have to go i mean i'm going so i'll if you want i'll go up tonight you don't have to go boy that sounds pretty good now why can't you and me go together what's the problem with you and me going together someone uh, there's just i don't know what it, it's going to sound like being connected on the same network if there's going to be a delay or anything like that it mm-hmm. will be an echo because there's no soundboard mm-hmm. i don't think there's going to be an echo i genuinely don't i just think that in person there's no delay but on the ipad i can hear a quarter of a second delay right now mm-hmm. it's, i can hear my voice here and then i can hear it over there mm-hmm. like right after mm-hmm. so that's might throw a guest off that has no radio experience Whereas to me and you, I don't think it'll throw us off. If mm. that makes any sense. Is that jacket that's on your chair behind you? Is that a Los Bukis jacket? Yes. 
Okay. Will you be wearing that on Radio Row? I don't think so because then I won't be able to go anywhere because people think I'm part of the band. <laughs> you know, I'm the new drummer or something. You know, uh, the, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it is a. I don't know. If you, it's a dope jacket. Have you seen it? It is dope. Yeah, it looks like like a jacket that I wore in high school. I used Eleven to have one of those jacket. shiny jackets. Yeah, I used to have one of those shiny jackets when I was in oh, high yeah. school. You know Look what? My fiance is always like, "Why don't you wear it out?" And I'm like, "I don't know. I should." Dude, can I can I borrow that and wear it tomorrow? You want to borrow my jacket and wear it tomorrow? Yeah. Only if you actually wear it. I promise you. I promise you I will wear it. You're not going to wear it out. No, I promise you I will. It's a dope jacket. Uh, it is dope. AF. If you let me borrow that that Los Bukis jacket, I will yeah. wear it tomorrow. I think that jacket is too important to you. I wouldn't do it. What size I mean, is it? It's a 2X, actually. Really? But it's it kind of runs big. small, bro. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, it's a, it's a Letterman jacket, so it's like all the way up here, anyways. Yeah, you know that I mean? jacket runs small, and I'm running big nowadays. So ooh, why not? Why ooh. not? Yeah, heavy, like heavy D, heavy mm -hmm. K. You understand what I'm saying, Brown? Uh oh, mm. uh, <laughs> my fiance. The door's open today. The dog is having some some stomach issues, mm -hmm. so the door the the door to the studio is open, mm -hmm. and she just texts me. The jacket was $150. No one is borrowing it. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Told you. Come on, Mar. You don't trust me to, to yeah. rock the Lowe's Bookies jacket? You know how much street Told crap says, I would uh, have? Mar, Scott says, what? You don't trust them? Yeah. Okay. She goes, okay. Yeah, I trust Scott. Okay. but Not but, Browner. Ah, that's great. <laughs> hey, just think about the street cred that I will have in L.A., if no, white guy like me is walking around rocking a Los Bukis jacket, you know how much street cred I would have, dude? Probably a lot. Yeah. Probably a lot. I would I would look definitely cool if I did it. You no, no. I, mean? I, I think white guy rocking the Los Bukis Letterman jacket, red and shiny yeah. like that, that especially gives me tremendous it looks, street cred. Especially because it looks like it's from the 90s. Yeah. So people are probably like, dude, this guy found that at a Goodwill or like one of those trendy like Secondhand stores, you yeah, know, yeah, at a at a at a speakeasy apothecary store. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the truth of the matter is, got the Los Bukis jacket in Oakland. In Oakland at yeah. the Coliseum. Hell to the year. Hell yeah. All right. Hey, listen, we're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. It's Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man broadcasting so on wrong? the airwaves. Yeah, I think I'm still gonna go. I think okay. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to do it. Uh, broadcasting on the airwaves of ESPN 1090. So anywhere in Southern California, you can get us on radio. Uh, tonight, we'll be on television. Channel 4 San Diego is our home base, part of the Cox Your View Network. But it's Channel 4 Santa Barbara, 118 in Orange County and in L.A. If you've got Cox or Spectrum Cable, and you can get us whenever you want us on all the different audio podcast platforms. Okay, so guys, listen. Um, last night. I decided that I really wanted to watch two things. I wanted to watch the Laker game because I thought to myself, this is a monster game. You have the defending world champions. You have Giannis, the two-time MVP. You've got on the other side, the home team, LeBron, AD, the controversy of Russ. And I thought to myself, I really want to see if the Lakers can step up and give us any hope that they might do something because Browner said yesterday on the show that the Lakers are built for a seven game series and that when they get into a seven game series, if everybody's healthy, they're trouble. And I just don't understand that because last night I saw the Lakers get annihilated, humiliated. I mean, Milwaukee scored nearly 80 points in just the first half. I legit thought they might score 140 or 150 points last night against the Lakers. And yeah, late in the game with LeBron, who's already decided to check out of the game, it's over. Late in the game, all the young guys start making a run, start coming back. They're down by 10. And as soon as the Lakers are down by 10, what does LeBron do? Takes off his, his hoodie. Hey, I'm coming back in. We got a legit chance to win. As soon as LeBron came back in the game, it went from like a 10-point lead for Milwaukee immediately to like a 16, 18-point lead for Milwaukee. So LeBron coming off the bench after already checking out for the night did nothing for the Lakers. So I wanted to watch the Laker game, but I also wanted to watch a little bit of the Winter Olympics last night. Let me ask you guys a question before we get into the Lakers. Are you guys putting in any time at all? Browner, I know it's Coastal Elite Winter Olympics. Are you guys watching any of the Winter Olympics at all? Hold on. No. Can, I, can I be browner again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're going you're gonna to kick back? All right. Here no, we go. No, I'm not. 
Although, yes, I am. I am, actually. I watched Sean White, his final run in the half pipe yesterday, qualify for the final, which is tomorrow. Yeah. I watched Michaela Schifrin again mm -hmm. fall in the mm -hmm. slalom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Listen, you're talking to the guy that watched all three hours of the opening ceremony on Peacock, okay? So I'm all, I'm in on Winter Olympics. So I'm watching yeah, the Winter Sean White homies. I don't know why y'all, but I'm not a big fan. I didn't watch none of them. You and Sean, Dude, Sean White are homies? Was, Sean White was one of yeah. the coolest interviews we did on 1090. Like, he was just so nice. Yeah, he was a great guy. He was really nice. That, that was back when Jim Steig, who was on earlier this week, was doing the Sean White, like, um, I don't know, exhibition series. I might have been at like Dodger Stadium, as I recall. Um, but I was watching last night this, and I don't even know what they call the sport necessarily. It's it's ski jumping, but it's like it's like trick ski jumping. Does anybody know what they call that? Is in it freestyle skiing? Maybe. So they have these kids, right? And there's this massive, massive downhill, this ramp. And then there's this huge jump, right? And the kids, and I say kids because they're all like really young kids. They're all like from Mammoth. Well, they're all from like around the world. But every time they show you these kids, they're like, yeah, hey, he's 19 years old. He's 21 years old. He's 23. Like they're all young kids. So they start out and they're like skiing backwards down this huge hill, getting massive amounts of speed. Then they hit the jump. And in the middle of the air, they're holding on to their skis. They're flipping around. They're doing somersaults. And then they land backwards and ski down the hill, the rest of the hill backwards. Unbelievable athletes. Incredible. But I got to say, I'm watching the Winter Olympics last night. And when the, when the wide shot pans out, you realize that they've built this giant ski jump amongst all of the like nuclear power plant stack pipes like where Homer Simpson works. <laughs> yeah. I don't get the Simpsons reference, but okay. please help me. Uh, Homer Simpson works at a nuclear power plant in like Springfield, Illinois. Didn't Got know. Big old stacks. Like just like, you. no, I didn't know. Imagine okay. this. Imagine if, okay, there's a great picture. I'm glad you're showing this. I literally took a screenshot last night off my television of the big smokestack over there that's got the Beijing Olympic rings all over it. Like, what the hell? That's the weirdest damn thing I've ever seen. They built this massive ski jumping hill amongst what looks like nuclear power plant stacks. Could you imagine if during the Olympics, when they come back to LA, could you imagine if they were in Carson and you know where all the, the smokestacks are in Carson yeah. right off the freeway? Could yep. you imagine if they built like, a track right there. And they're like, yeah, it's a beautiful day here in LA, but look at all these smokestacks. Alex is showing a great picture of it right now. There's the, what it looks like right now with the Olympics there. And then there's the, what it looks like when the Olympics aren't there. No, you can see the, 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 the jump right in the middle, the white streak. Wait, That's, I thought, I no. thought the top picture is, is what they built. And the bottom picture is no, what it normally looks like. Is a zoomed out picture. Oh, oh, now I see it. Oh, okay, got it, got it. Oh my god, dude, Browner, you have no idea what you're missing. The Olympics in the middle of a nuclear power plant. In yeah, China. I got, I got a good idea what I'm missing. I, I got a real, real good idea, real good idea. Mm -hmm. Your, your, your detailed explanation about skiing backwards just, you know, blew my socks off. Really? Well, oh, you see there, there it is, Alex. My socks there it is. Off. There it is. I. Uh, don't have much interest in the winter games. You're blowing my socks off. Speaking of socks, Browner, here they are. Yeah, all right. Out. Take a look all at right, these Aaron things. Rogers. Was that, was that a 12-pack? feet, man. Is that, Is that a 12-pack? 12-pack of socks? Mm -hmm. These are the best socks. I get them at Costco. Kirkland? They're, they're, no, they're Pumas. They are oh, the best. You fancy, dog. Oh, yeah. I'm Coastal Elite. By the way, yeah. this is where Homer Simpson works. Do you Let's get see. the reference now? Oh, now I get it. But okay. I never watch The Simpsons, so. Right. Well, there you go. Yeah. So anyway, I decided I was going to watch the Lakers. Dude, Kirkland underwear too. Yeah. Yeah. Just that's all I buy now. I really? threw away everything else. Um, do a price comparison on the Kirkland underwear versus the Manscaped underwear, and then get back to me because if the Manscaped underwear is anywhere near the same price, yeah. you go with the Manscaped. No, but the all Manscaped day. underwear are like fancy, like comfy. Like they just feel like a different level. You yeah. know. They feel mm -hmm. a different level. Those are, those are his date night underwear. Yes. 
Yes. No, but I'm telling you right now, when you use our promo code, great friends, and you get 20% off and you get the free shipping, and then they give you the 50% off on the next three pack. I promise you this right now. Oh, look, Alex is showing it to us right now. He's got the manscaped panties right there. Take them out. These? You want oh, these? Yeah. What size are they? Large. Oh, dude. If you could send the underwear with Browner, the microphone, the camera, and the Los Bukis jacket, man, you'd be making my night. Look at how good those look. Like, I don't think people can feel, obviously kid can't feel, but the, the material <laughs> is really top notch. It is. It is. I'm telling you right now. Obviously All right. So, so Alex, it. a care package for me today. You ready? Yes. Uh, Los Bukis jacket for street cred. Okay. Manscaped underwear for, for comfort and flexibility. Okay. Uh, camera, microphone, and I will, I will go to Radio Row tomorrow. And do you have, do you have two Thunderbolts for your laptop to put plug in the internet i don't even know what fun uh no the adapter that plugs oh in yeah the, yeah yeah i think I two do. of them i think so yeah for both laptops i think so because we we saw how the wi-fi was today so. yeah yeah all right hey listen uh manscaped.com use our promo code great friends you'll save 20 percent on all the products and you'll uh you'll get free shipping so check those guys out uh just a quick plug for our people up at manscaped in carlsbad because you mentioned sean white sean white's from carlsbad so there you go all right there there you go um hey listen let's get back and let's let's talk about what happened last night with the lakers not just the fact that they got smoked it's who cares it's the storyline thereafter it's america pounding on these guys it's everybody jumping on russell westbrook it's it's becoming well it's just becoming a really interesting story now more so than ever before i want to get to that plus a bunch of super bowl stuff we want to get to uh, dr max say is going to stop by from i thrive md our boy craig Mizrak is stopping by he's the world's biggest cincinnati Bengals fan everybody stay right where you are this is kaplan and crew from the seven mile casino studios All right, great friends. It is a Tuesday afternoon. Kaplan and crew along with Grande and the Brown Man from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. And hey, by the way, guys, for everybody that's been busting my chops, and I get it, you know, a lot of YouTubers are watching the show. There's a lot of people that watch the show on television at night, and they're going, yo, Scott, what happened here, man? You know, when you were back at your other house, you had this kind of cool looking studio. You had the brick wall behind you. You had the nice bookshelf. Everything was going on. What has happened to your studio? Um, Today, I got, I remember the other day I was asking you guys, who's got a handyman for me? I yeah. needed help around. I got a handyman coming here later today. He's going to put up a bunch of the stuff that I need put up and I'm, I'm, I'll be like 80% of the way there, but this is a work in progress, pal. Okay. So for every, I make sure my TV to the side when I get there, I got your TV dog. All right. I got your TV. I got everything you need, man. You come to my house, you take whatever you want. I like the sound of that. Mine too. Yeah. You want a TV too? Maybe. All right. Well, whatever you guys need, you guys can have. I mean, seriously, I got so much extra garbage sitting in my in my my uh, my garage right now. I got to get rid of this stuff and I'd rather give it to friends. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, look, uh, let, let's jump in to what happened last night. I made mention of it in the last segment. I wanted to watch the Laker game last night. And I wanted to watch the Olympics last night. I decided that I really wanted to focus in on the Laker game because here's what I thought going into the game last night. LeBron James at home in L.A. Super Bowl week with a lot of people in town who want to try and go to these kinds of games, right? And then you got Giannis and the defending world champions in town. And so this is an interesting game because if the Lakers win, then maybe they're giving you a reason to think that they might do something. But if they lose, and in particular, if they get pounded, reality has to set in. Browner, you said it yesterday, and I tweeted you last night. When you say that the Lakers roster, as it currently sits, is built for a seven-game series, why should I believe, or why should anybody else believe, that in a seven-game series, they can beat a quality opponent, whereas in a one game like last night, they get annihilated and destroyed? And ultimately, LeBron has to admit after the game, we're no good and we can't keep up with these guys. So why, why should I buy this they're built for a seven-game series notion? Because, I mean... For the casual viewer who doesn't watch a lot of NBA basketball, guys who win championships, unless they're completely, truly driven, they don't really care about the regular season. They all ramp up after the All-Star break. I think that's what you're going to see the Lakers do. This is a complete veteran team who know they all know how to win. They've all been in big spots. They've all won games, critical games, deep in the playoff games. LeBron's obviously got four championships. When him and AD got to the finals – they were unstoppable. I mean, they played the Heat, who weren't very good at that time, but they were unstoppable. 
when you get them in a seven game series healthy, the veterans know how to play. The lack of defense. Now, I don't think they're going to turn into a great defensive team all of a sudden, but I think they will become middle of the pack playoff teams when it becomes when it comes to defense. And that's all you really need at that level to get to the middle of the pack while your offense continues to be successful. Like there's nothing really wrong with their offense. It's just Russell Westbrook is is playing poorly. So when he can come around, and he will, because he's been in the league long enough, he when he comes around, he comes out of this slump that he's in, I think people are going to change their tune real quick. All right. Well, I don't. Uh, I can't see it. I mean, I just can't see it. I don't see how the Lakers can go from getting humiliated and annihilated last night. But that's a good team. But let, let's do this. If you if you see them, if you see the Lakers in the NBA Finals mm-hmm. against the Bucks, mm-hmm. it's not going to look like that. The Bucks will probably win. Don't get me wrong, but it won't look like that. Well, then let me ask. What are we question. doing right now? Well, we we just he asked what a are, question. I'm answering. I know, but it's like, what are we wasting our time and the viewers' time with a conversation about the Lakers in the finals and the Lakers in the playoffs? This is a bubble team that will be lucky to make the playing game. And part of the problem with the Lakers is their mentality that Brown is talking about, that we'll just turn it up after the, after the second half. And we know how to win. And we are a veteran team. And we just know that's part of the problem because Russell Westbrook last night Mm -hmm. after the game where he was like, I shouldn't have to hit a benchmark to close out games. I've done enough in my time as in the NBA to be in a closing lineup. Mm -hmm. It's like, so just because you're Russell Westbrook and you're playing like absolute garbage, but your name is Russell Westbrook. So you deserve to be in the lineup. Mm -hmm. That's the Lakers problem. I agree. I agree with you. In fact, I was watching that press conference last night and I heard Russell Westbrook first complain about nobody knows what the lineup is. Nobody knows who's going to be playing. Nobody knows who's going to be starting. Nobody knows who's going to be closing the game. Like his first complaint is the coach makes these decisions and I'm not involved or I don't know what my role is going to be. So that was first he started to air out Frank Vogel. The second part of the problem is, is, is what you were just saying. Um, I have earned the right to be part of the closing lineup of a game because they're giving Russell Westbrook a hard time. Like, dude, why are you not playing in the fourth quarter? I don't know. Coach's decision. But my name and my career and my stats and my history, I have earned the right to be on the floor at that time. In fact, there's this one moment during the game where uh, LeBron and AD are sitting on the bench and Westbrook comes over to the two of them and he like has his, his hands on both of their shoulders and then he puts his hand on LeBron's head and he said after the game, he was telling them, hey, I came here to try and help you guys, but I can't help you if I'm not in the game. And neither one of those guys seemed to react to what Russ was saying. Uh, you're right, Alex. His This notion of, I've been in the league a long time, I've scored a whole bunch of points. I have more triple doubles than anybody else. Therefore, I've earned the right. No, dude, you have not earned the right on this team this season. And you're right. That is the problem that everybody's been walking on eggshells around this guy. Like, hey, we got him. We pay him $44 million. His reputation is this. So we have to all just kiss his ass. Dude, that's got to end at some point, doesn't it? It's got to end now, Dan, because listen, as a real <laughs> fan that watches every game, you have to – when you watch games, there is no reason why Russell Westbrook should be closing out a game because Stanley Johnson is playing better than him. Austin Reeves is playing better than him. Malik Monk is playing better than him. And they put effort into both sides of the, of the floor. Russell Westbrook is a liability on defense, will always be a liability on defense, and the older he gets, it's only going to get worse. The guy puts no effort into his assignments on the defensive end whatsoever. And on offense, if, if Russell Westbrook – is not being aggressive, which right now he currently has the yips in basketball. Never seen it, but he's got it. Yes. He's got a wide open three. Last night, he was five feet from the basket. Giannis didn't even contend him. He's like, shoot it, dude. And he bricked it. Like this guy right now, when he's not aggressive, he's not turning the ball over and he's not aggressive. He's useless. He's useless. The reason why you bring Russell Westbrook is for aggression. And if you get eight turnovers a game, then you get eight turnovers a game as long as he's putting up 25 points and dishing the ball out. He is a cancer in this team. He's got to go. I don't care what they get back. But Hmm. again, but again, it goes back 
to my original point about the Lakers this season. If Anthony Davis isn't your best player, the team wasn't going to win the championship. Anthony Davis has been a shell of himself. He's been injured, which again, we know he gets injured all the time. But even when he's playing like last night, last night should have been the AD game. I when, thought it was, that's what I thought, Browner. I thought, well, wait a second. If Giannis scored 47 last time these two teams played and LeBron was not in the lineup that night and AD only had like 18 or 19 points last time they played, I figured tonight AD's going to come out with his absolute A game. Yes. And he's going to either shut down Giannis or he's going to have a big night offensively. And Giannis last night put up, you know, an MVP caliber performance and AD did not. Because we keep looking around this, we keep looking around this roster. We want to blame Russ because that's very easy. It's very easy to do is to blame Russell Westbrook because you can see it. You can see something clearly off with him the way that he's playing basketball. There's nothing wrong with Anthony Davis. There's nothing wrong with him. So why he why he out there getting dog walked by Giannis? Why why are we well not not we by we I don't mean the three of us but why are people not calling more attention to Anthony Davis? Because when when the Lakers are good, people look oh AD. Like you say at, at ESPN, people, Scott, like they call it cheat code. Oh, he's the cheat code. Well, I, didn't they not put the code in last night? Like, <laughs> they like, were they playing by the rules got, last right. night? Sometimes you got to play fair. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because that does Giannis look like he had the cheat code last night? So I, yeah. for, for actually, me, last night was since he came back last night. To, last night was his worst game since coming back because he's actually been playing really well. AD. You know, like, AD has been playing very, very well until up until last night. But you can't – if you but, were to tell me AD played – a, this, he's been terrible, but he played an amazing game last night. That would have been more important to me because that's who you're going to have to beat at the end of the season to be in a championship contention. But that's, that's my point. There's no championship contention. Yeah, I agree. There is no yeah. playoff con- – dude, they are a play-in team because it doesn't – listen, Russell Westbrook – when you talk about big three, he's not in a big three. He's part of the problem. There's two, and the rest of the roster is trash. It is trash. When you are relying on guys like Stanley Johnson, who signed three 10-day contracts yeah. before getting signed to a guarantee deal, when you're relying on Austin Reeves, who's an undrafted kid, a rookie, when you're relying on those guys, when you're relying on Malik Monk, who's on a veteran minimum because nobody else wanted him, even though he's playing way better than that, like that is a problem. Everybody you brought in, DeAndre Jordan, a waste. Terrible. Trevor Ariza, a waste. Kent Bazemore, a waste. Uh, who's the other dude? The, I don't even forgot. The guy never Dwight Howard. Played. Dwight Howard doesn't do anything. Dwight Howard plays, but there's another Not guy much. on the team. That's, he doesn't do much. Yeah, but there's another guy on the team that I'm forgetting right now. Avery it's just Bradley? Awful. Bradley, awful. There's another one, too. Awful. Oh, uh, uh, um, oh he, who's the guy that they signed that has not played for them at all this year at all? Bazemore. Just, oh, yeah. Kent Bazemore. Yeah. No, but there's another guy, too. Like, literally, like, nothing, nothing has worked for this team. Wayne Ellington. Wayne like, Ellington. Just, oh, God. Dude, like, you can't. I think it's incredibly telling that when the Lakers made a run, and by the way, against the Bucks starters in the fourth quarter, it was AD, Monk, Reeves, Johnson, and THT. Mm-hmm. Everybody under the age of 28. Mm-hmm. Like, that's not a surprising thing watching this team play. The only one that's really kind of worked is Melo, just because he can score. And, he's, like, and that's now he's he hurt. But this whole team, Polinka needs to be fired. That's what I'm saying. Like, Polinka needs to go. Because I said in the first segment, I'll say it again, 16 months ago, 16 months ago, he had a championship team that he has deconstructed and got you this. Well, and don't forget also 16, and you know, it, after 16 months ago, so call it maybe 14 months ago or 12 months ago, the the Lakers were the top team in the Western Conference until LeBron got hurt. And then, you know, it all fell apart. LeBron right. got hurt, Everybody, he got hurt. Belinka plays the game like he's creating some sort of Madden or NBA 2K roster. They just get collecting the names with the overall rating. He has he he had guys that work in pieces on a championship team. And he got rid of them all because they don't have a name. Well, and he's and he's got one guy now in Russell Westbrook who again takes all the blame. I'm kind of with you, Browner. Everybody just blames it on Russell Westbrook. But, yeah, it's easy. You know, but he's not blameless. No, no, he's not blameless. But but it's it's 44 million dollars, which is why you couldn't have so many other role players on the team because all your money went into Russell Westbrook, and then they just had to fill in the roster with a bunch of what you guys but are if, calling trash, man. But if you tell me, because th- mm-hmm. this goes back to th- if you tell me that LeBron is great. He's mm-hmm. older, so I don't get I don't put much of the emphasis in the regular season on him. 
if AD is great, like I believe AD is great, this is unacceptable. Like it's just unacceptable. Period. When AD's on the floor, he should be the best player on the floor. But I don't. Not, I, not I, I don't Giannis put that on LeBron the anymore. I mean, LeBron on, he's, looks old. He's not Giannis though. I mean, Giannis. Giannis yes, is so is. much better See, than AD. That this is why this this is where I disagree. I think he is. I honestly believe he's just he's every bit as good as Giannis. His game is just a little different. Giannis is more physical and power. AD's more skill and finesse. But the issue is, in the offense in which they run, which is still totally based on LeBron, who looks old, AD can't go full steam. LeBron doesn't look old. Like LeBron's Giannis, been, LeBron's been. He's had he, one of the best stretches of his career. Yeah, he's been playing. I mean, scoring. He's on. Fire. And what are we talking about? Them getting blown out. Who had the worst plus well, minus? You, you guys you, like numbers? Nerd you, alert. You know what? You who know had what? the Nerd, worst plus minus last night. Nerd alert. You ready? Okay, nerd alert. You should be thinking about LeBron the same way you think about Otani. Otani's one guy who can do a lot of different things, yet, to your point, Otani could not elevate the Angels, so therefore he's trash. LeBron playing great, playing out of his mind, scoring like crazy, but the team still stinks. So shouldn't Otani and LeBron be in the same category, Browner? Two completely different sports. Yeah, but two completely exact same results. No, because basketball, one person can dominate Every single possession. Otani can't do that. He no, doesn't bet nine times. No, but you you oh, have wow. said over and over again that he should be by himself. If he's this great, then the Angels should be in the playoffs. LeBron has been that great, and the Lakers still stink. Well, how come Otani isn't undefeated when he pitches and hits? <laughs> Is LeBron undefeated? Of course not. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I don't NBA know. NBA on TNT had don't a know. conversation. I, I don't know why you do that to yourself, uh, Scott. You, NBA on TNT had a great conversation last night because it was Dwayne Wade and Candace Parker and Shaq last night. Mm -hmm. And they had the, they, Shaq asked them, who's more talented, AD or, or Giannis? Mm -hmm. And everybody responded, AD. Come on. Problem is, the problem is, no, listen, like everybody said, that doesn't mean he's a better player. He's better. He's more talented. He could do more on the yes. court. But mentality and aggression mm -hmm. and ability and mindset, he don't have it like right. Giannis has it. Mm -hmm. So that makes Giannis a much better player. Giannis yeah. is a top three player in the NBA, not because he's a good shooter, not because he's like all this this incredible athlete. It's because he tries way harder than any than most players on 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 the court. He has that mentality of you're not going to beat me. AD went into his turtle shell yesterday. Yeah, he's done it every time he plays. It, it becomes evident how much better Giannis is. Every time they play each other. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hold I'm that surprised. thought. Hold that thought. Cause I want to hear from LeBron and AD and I want to hear some of this rust sound. We'll get to it in a second. Hey, just a quick mention uh, for everybody. I believe this Friday I was going to be down at West coast BBQ shop, but I got a call yesterday from Brian Bushfield and his big green egg rep who was supposed to come meet us down there has COVID people are still getting it. Um, even though I think we're, we're kind of getting through Omicron and we're, things are going to start to open back up and masks are coming off, et cetera. Um, people are still getting it. So as of right now, Alex, I'm not really sure that I'm going down to West coast BBQ on Friday, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't come down to West coast BBQ shop. Alex was down there Saturday for the big cooking exhibition, getting everybody ready with recipes and all kinds of fun things that you might want to do for this Sunday as you're going to have a party and have people over. Browner was there on Friday you know, eating everything in sight. In fact, Browner took a lot of heat, and I believe rightly so, for the way he ate that hot dog, where he, oh, yeah. he had the hot dog, and rather than biting the end of the dog, he bit kind of into the middle of the dog. Imagine having a burrito and biting into the middle of the burrito. In fact, how did you phrase it on social media, Alex? Should should Browner be should Browner canceled? be arrested. Oh, arrested. arrested. How about that, Browner? Jail time, no cancellation, <laughs> okay? Of course, I'm going to put a black man in jail. Oh man, mm -hmm. man! Why's it got to be like wow. that? In this, in this wow. case, deservedly so. <laughs> wow. First of all, let me clear something up about this whole hot dog situation, okay? Y'all yeah. didn't see the hot dog toppings, okay? You didn't see how far the dog was in the bun, so I couldn't have. If I would have taken a bite from the front of it, I wouldn't have got any hot dog. It would have been all bun and chili. The whole point was to eat all three at once, and that's why I did it like that. But you couldn't see that from the angle that you were at. So y'all out here trashing me on the internet. Talk about I don't know I eat a hot dog, which on is the ridiculous. Internet. <laughs> yeah, on the internet. Uh, I had I had the exact same hot dog and I ate it like a normal person. Thus, 
No jail time. Yeah, like a real man. West Coast BBQ Shop, <laughs> westcoastbbqshop.com, 2330 Proctor Valley Road. Hey, today's only Wednesday. You got until Sunday. Sauces and rubs and accessories. And by the way, if you mention the great friends, you say, hey, Brian, great friends, 10% off on Big Green Egg products. So whether it's the Big Green Egg itself or whether it's accessories to go with the Big Green Egg, you're getting 10% savings when you mention great friends at West Coast BBQ Shop, 2330 Proctor Valley Road down in Chula Vista. Okay, guys, let's go to some of the post-game press conference because I think the post-game is way more entertaining than the actual game itself. Alex, where, where should we start? Should we start with LeBron and AD? Should we start with Russ? Who should we, who should we go with first here? Uh, well, we don't have that much time. Let's go with LeBron. Okay, LeBron. Let's take a look. Does it hit different in the sense of what? Does it tell you something deeper about your team compared to? Yeah, it tells us we ain't we ain't on their level. I mean, I probably I'd have told you that before the game started. Do you think you can reach that level? Where they are right now, um, I don't know. Um, do I think we can reach the level where Milwaukee is right now? Um, no. Is that what you that what you want to hear from me? Yes. No. Hmm. We cannot <laughs> yes. reach Milwaukee's no. level. That's exactly what we wanted to hear yeah, from you, LeBron. That's right. Yes. An yeah. admission that your team is caca and you're not gonna go anywhere <laughs> with this team. Can we hear any of Russ before we hit the break? Yeah. Uh here he is entitled LeBron uh Russ. LeBron and A D on the bench. Um Pat a day. Oh, Do you have a sense sorry. for what benchmarks you have to hit to, to be in the starting line or the closing lineup? more consistently I'll, um <laughs> i don't got that answer for you brother i wish i did i shouldn't have to hit any benchmark to be honest i put a lot of work and i got a lot of respect in this game I, I, I don't have to hit a benchmark i shouldn't have to um i earned the right you know to be in closing lineups i mean i you know numbers will tell you i don't have to explain that but like i said once again that ain't my decision that's his decision that he um and the staff think it's best for the game. And unfortunately, um, you know, just kind of just got to go with it and figure it out the best way I can and be there for my teammates as much as I can and make sure I come to work and do my job as a professional. Oh, man. I'll tell you right now, I saw that last night. And I went, oh, dude, this thing's down. about oh. to get real, real ugly. Hold your thought, Brown, because we're going we're gonna to come go back off. and we'll talk more about it. You, you want to go off? I'm going to go off. With All right. Back. I'm fitting to hear you go off. And. Not only that, I want to tell you something else. You want to know something else I want to get to coming up? Tom Brady retires from the Buccaneers. But has he really truly retired from the NFL? There's a story that's going on out there right now that Brady retired from the Bucs so he could get out of Tampa, which is something that somebody here predicted. We'll get to that story. Plus, Brown are fitting to go off. Stick around. This is Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Hey, great friends. It is a Wednesday afternoon here on Kaplan and crew, along with Grande and the Brown man from the seven mile casino studios, seven mile casino.com for more information. Sammy's restaurant and bar over here, blackjack poker over here in a smoke free environment. You're going to love it. Come on down and visit. So uh, we'll see you down there at seven mile casino. So guys, look, it is Super Bowl week. Tomorrow we will be on Radio Row. Friday Grande will be on Radio Row. But just because it's Super Bowl week and we've been talking a lot about the Lakers collapse in this whole disaster and Tom Brady and maybe he's moving on to someplace else, we'll get there. Uh, we'll get back to it. But I told you guys, 2022 is going to be the year where we all together collectively get our health together. I know for me, um, I stepped on the scale the other day. I'm like, okay, it's time. It started 15 pounds. And, uh, and I've already really started to put my mind to work. And part of it is going to iThrive MD. And Dr. Max Say is back on the show from iThrive MD. Doctor, good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing great, guys. Happy to be back. I'm excited to share some more information with all the guys out there on how we can get back to being super healthy this year. Yeah, as a matter of fact, Doc, um, a friend of mine was recently in. He's a longtime listener and viewer. He's a former NBA basketball player. He was a high school basketball legend in San Diego, went on to become a collegiate All-American, and like I said, played in the NBA for a bunch of years. And he sent me a text, and he said, hey, is I Thrive MD legit? And I said, dude, come on. I would never steer you wrong. I would never send you to someplace that I don't use myself. So I wound up getting a, a selfie that he sent me of him. <laughs> 
and and Dr. Damani in the office because he was getting um, intravenous vitamins. Can we start off with that? I keep talking about IV therapy, and I know that we're going to have IV lounges coming up with the new location shortly. But if somebody hears me talk about IV therapy, would you just because you've delivered mine? Would you just yep. one more time what people's body receives when they do IV therapy? Yeah. So, I mean, especially following this weekend, a lot of people might need some IV therapy to help get them hydrated too. But essentially what we do is we take super concentrated vitamins at like a few hundred percent more times of what you need every day. We put it in a bag that's full of hydrating liquid that's matched to the electrolyte levels of your blood. So when we combine that together, you get a 99% absorption rate of a ton more vitamins that you would usually get every day you get instant hydration throughout your whole body and all those nutrients get delivered out to every cell of your body before your liver ever starts processing and breaking them down. So every cell really gets like the raw bioactive vitamins. And that's what gives you that like kind of kickstart feeling. It fills you up. You get lots of energy and you just kind of feel like a new person for a few days afterwards. Yeah, I know. I loved it when I got it last time. I can't wait for us to start these IV, uh, you know, therapy sessions with, with our listeners. Alex, maybe this is what you need, man. You know, you've been very, Alex told me the other day, he feels like garbage, got a big headache, took how many, how many different COVID tests did you take, Alex? Uh, I took one yesterday. I'm negative. I don't have any COVID symptoms. I'm telling Scott though, that this girl on Peloton just kicking my ass, dude. <laughs> Olivia Amato is just like, a, she's wrecking me, man. And I think it's affecting my entire body in my day. Yep. I hear you. And that's a, that's, what's hard. It's the recovery process. When you're dealing with all those metabolites, if you're going hard, you're trying to get back into the gym you're creating a bunch of toxins that your body's releasing as you're exercising, as your cells are repairing. And it takes a while for us to get hydrated when we're trying to chug water afterwards or beforehand. So that's what's great about getting the instant hydration instead of waiting four hours for your body to absorb the water. And it also helps clear out all those toxins. It helps your detox processes and it helps energize your cells too. So you'll be able to keep up more with what she's demanding of you in that. <laughs> Look, man, let me, oh, let me kicks ass. She, that girl is tough. <laughs> Alex told me the other day, he's like, dude, I just took the Olivia Amato 45 minute hitting Hills class. And then he sent me all of his stats. And I was like, I'm going to try and chase him down and see if I can catch up to him. But he's right. I mean, I, I really think that, that the, the hardcore exercise and the toxins that are being released and then the lack of hydration is why he has been feeling low energy. Alex, mm -hmm. you should go in to see Dr. Maxey and just go get an IV therapy and let's let's see what happens to you. We'll use you as an experiment. I'd yeah, and it, do it. it takes about like 15 minutes for our smallest bag, our medium-sized bag, which is like the best bang for your buck, takes about 25, 30 minutes, you know? So it's not the longest procedure. It's really painless. And we also have some other great options. If you are feeling tired and the IVs don't work, doing ozone IV therapy, which is something that we have here at iThriveMD, would also greatly benefit you. So I don't know if you guys want to jump into that at all. Definitely want to hear about what ozone does. Browner, what were you about to say before we all jumped all over you? Yeah, before y'all got in the way. Listen, <laughs> you are, and I don't really give men compliments. So take this for, for what it's worth. These two dudes know. I don't really go around complimenting men. You should be the spokesperson for this company. Your skin looks fantastic. Your hair looks great. Your beard looks great. So whatever they, whatever they, whatever you doing there is working for you. So you should definitely be out more showing people and talking about this because your skin looks fantastic. I don't know if you got the right light on you. Your hair looks good. I don't know if you're having a good hair day or what's going on, but you looking, you doing all right today, brother. You are doing all right. I appreciate today. that, man. <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm on the same thing that Scott's on. That's why I'm looking so ha fresh and happy, man. NAD, IV. Well, you need to give him your barber's number. That's true. That's true. We yeah. we can figure that out. I know. I've got a bad haircut going right now. Uh, Dr. Max say, so we, uh, we had Phil Davis, the MMA fighter, on the show last week. And he was talking about prepping his body for a big fight that's coming up. Mm -hmm. um, you just mentioned ozone. DJ Gay, the former great San Diego State basketball player, was on a couple of weeks ago. He also mentioned ozone. Mm -hmm. I know I've taken ozone therapy, but if I'm being really honest, I don't really know what I took. I just trusted you guys. So what is ozone therapy exactly? Yeah, that's fair. So, I mean, ozone is something everyone, something that everyone's heard of, you know, it's in our atmosphere. We hear about the ozone layer, but essentially what it is, it's just three oxygen molecules that are bound together. So we use a machine that concentrates oxygen into that form of three molecules, and then we inject it 
by infusing it into saline solution. So a lot of people will typically draw your blood out or use a machine that draws your blood out and they put heparin in it and then infuse the ozone. We use a quick, simple 20 minute process where we infuse our ozone into saline and then deliver it intravenously. And what happens when you put ozone in the body is that it literally saturates your whole body with oxygen. And that helps fight off viruses, it helps fight off bacteria, and it also supercharges all your cells the way that NAD does, because it allows your cells just to kind of get a breath of fresh air, essentially, you know. So if you think about as we get older, all the COVID stuff going on, lingering issues with that, it's hard for our body to get as much oxygen and get the nutrients to where we need them. So even if you are just doing IV therapy and you're getting the nutrients to all your cells, they might be the depleted of oxygen, which is one of the most important things for them to be able to create energy, to be able to detox and just function optimally. I mean, oxygen is the, the compound of life for us. You know, you, so. you know, it's interesting you mentioned all this because what I do is I, I'll say a lot of times during, you know, like commercial reads on the show, I'll say, hey, look, you know, if you're feeling low energy, if your libido is low, you're not as active and as energetic as you once were in the bedroom, it could be low, low testosterone. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, it may not be low testosterone. You know, and so what I suggest to everybody is, go into iThrive MD and get this, this bolt of energy with NAD. And yet again, I trust you guys. Could you mm -hmm. explain NAD to everybody? Yeah, so NAD is a buzzword that's been going around. It's one of the hottest anti-aging molecules on the market today. And essentially what it is, it's a form of vitamin B3 like niacin. And if you've ever taken niacin, you get a kind of a flush or skin gets itchy and that's because it's kind of supercharging your cells and increasing blood flow. When we do NAD plus and we give you an injection of that or an IV, it sends those nutrients in every cell in the body again, just like ozone and it kind of kickstarts them. So NAD is used at the base layer to create energy. And as we get older, all of our NAD levels deplete. That's why we don't recover as well. That's why we get hang hung over when we drink in the morning, just because of our cells aren't able to function as quickly and as fast as they used to. So it really is just the supercharge. It's almost like hitting the turbo uh, for your system, really kickstarting all your cells. Now, what I want to show everybody is this. The beauty of going to iThrive MD is, you don't have to go into the to the office all the time. This right here, this tiny little needle with this tiny little amount of liquid in it, this is my um, this is my testosterone, mm -hmm. and and so I do this once every two weeks or so. I give myself a little injection. Um, most people think, oh, I could never inject myself. It's it's really no big deal at all. Where at? You want to know where? Right, yeah. right in the tuchus. Left or right cheek. I alternate? go left cheek. I go left yeah. cheek. No, I'm a left okay. cheek kind of guy. I'm a yeah. left cheek sort of guy. We share everything here. Might as well share the details of it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I got no problem with this at all. I, I I literally can show you. I mean, I can drop my drawers and, and give you uh, an example. Yeah, we don't want to get kicked off YouTube, how, though. How does it feel? Is it like a pinch? No, you don't. I, Brown, I swear to you, like, I'm not afraid of shots at all. I have no fear of needles. I know some people do. I don't. Um, no, you barely even feel it. You just plug it you, doom, you just puncture your skin you you push the thing the uh the testosterone goes in and and uh hey girlfriend look out because i'm uh i'm coming in hot you know what i'm saying in a big way well, I, i'm hoping not hot i hope another age but not you know yeah well hey i'm just telling you it's, it's great because doctor when people come to you it's not like oh hey i'll see you know in two weeks i got to come back you send us home with product and assuming we're able to do it on our own and deliver it to ourselves you don't have to keep going back and forth. Yeah, and that's what's great about working with us here. A lot of clinics, they'll just kind of completely send stuff out. They'll never have you in the office, but we work with people on where they are. You know, some people like come in and every week and seeing us and talking with us and talking about their health, seeing how things have changed, if they're able to exercise or not. Some people prefer just coming in once a month and checking in with us, getting updated labs, and other people will just see every couple months. So we try to work with everyone on where they're at and figure out a plan that's best for them, you know, and really take into the whole person to account. Alex, you, you gotta go. I mean, just pick a day. You got this relationship with Dr. Max saying, yeah. and by the way, that's the beauty for everybody else who's watching and listening. You know, you know, Gary Cooper. So when you call him, when you want to talk about mortgages, you already feel like you have a relationship with a guy like Gary Cooper. Same goes here. You know, you, you, you now know Dr. Damani, you know, Dr. Max say. So when you go in, you'd be like, yo, I saw you on the show. I heard what you said. I want, I want to see what that intravenous vitamin is like, because one of the things Dr. Damani talks about all the time is we eat 
and we, we try to get nutrients out of our food and we're, most of us are not disciplined with our diets. And then secondly, we, our bodies don't absorb the nutrients. That's the beauty of the intravenous vitamins. So there's a lot of different stuff for you now at I Thrive MD. And now everybody, you got a relationship with the doc. So when you go in and see him, you already know him. Alex, you got to go in and give it a try. I really want to. Maybe, um, maybe I should go before I go to LA for the Super Bowl because, you know, you never know what you're going to get into at the Super Bowl. Yep. Why don't you go? Why don't you, seriously, why don't you go tomorrow after the show, or maybe you go in the morning, go before the show, and get one of these these intravenous vitamin bags and see what happens to you. I'm down. Okay. 100%. Yeah. All right. I'll, we'll have to make an appointment with <laughs> yeah. Jay, Jay's <laughs> wife, Raquel, who runs the whole joint. I can tell you that right now. Listen, listen to Raquel in the background. What is she saying, yeah. Doc? <laughs> she's just I'll make the appointment. She, she's making the appointment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she'll make the appointment. <laughs> hey, Doc, it is great to talk to you. Thank you for just 10 minutes of education about uh, intravenous vitamins, about NAD, ozone therapy, testosterone. I mean, all of the great things that you guys are doing for men's health at iThrive MD. Awesome stuff today, Doc. We appreciate you. Appreciate you guys very much. I look forward to chatting with everyone again. Yeah, and Rock, we're gonna we're gonna talk to you off air. Rock, where is she? Can we see her? Hello, yes. Raquel. It is all right. I'm Over coming. Here. Hello, Ra Kel Gay. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yep, that's me. I, I, I'm act, I was actually a basketball player too, you know. Really? really? <laughs> you ever play against DJ? Yes, but we. He he'll never admit it, but I did cross him one time. Oh really? Oh, Have you wow! Ever been- you can't be you can't be putting that out publicly. Don't do that. Now you got oh, to to hear it. I have to. I have to own it because he will never. Ah. <laughs> Would you like to play one on one against Browner here? No. No. Browner no. six, Browner's six foot seven inches tall of twisted steel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm good. I actually I actually won't ever play against DJ again either because it, it just you know. That was like my one highlight. You don't want to hurt the ego too much. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to go home to that guy. Yeah. Hey, Rock, we're going to talk to you off air. We got Alex here has been getting beat up by Olivia Amato on his Peloton. We got to get this kid energized. Yeah, definitely. We'll get you, we'll get you uh, brought in and taken care of. I can't right. wait. Yeah. Hey, Rock, thank, thank you. you Dr. Maxey, thank you guys. And uh, we'll be looking forward to Alex's report after he takes that, that IV therapy. Th- and, and by the way, looking forward to when we can all get together for IV lounges. I hope that's coming real soon. Really soon. I think just another week or two, and we should be all set to start having people in there. All right. Really wow. excited to have you guys yeah. there. Yeah, we are too. Hey, Doc, we'll talk to you soon. Take care, man. Thank you. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Take it easy. All right. Hey, look, thanks to Dr. Max A. Thanks to Rock Gay. And uh, Alex, I will be very curious to hear what happens when you get this IV therapy. So make sure you get in there tomorrow before you go up to LA on Friday. Yeah, I can't wait, dude. It's going to be because I, I desperately, desperately need it, man. It's uh, There's no reason why I'm this tired except the Peloton. That's got to be it. <laughs> hey, Browner, um, before we hit the break and before we talk to Dr. Max A, you said, and I quote, I'm fitting to go off. Um we had been talking about the Lakers. We'd been talking about Russell Westbrook, LeBron James, AD, this collapse, this roster, uh, the game last night getting blown out by, by Milwaukee. You said you were fitting to go off. What were you fitting to go off about? You know, sometimes when you see things that people don't see, you have to speak them out so other people can see them. Did you notice how in the press conference, which you know how much I love press conferences, who's next to LeBron? AD. AD. Yeah, his right-hand man. Who's next to Westbrook? Nobody. No one. Mm-hmm. You know they could put three people on them podiums, right? It's just the seat and the camera angle. So this is the this is the this is why this is falling apart. Because LeBron does these 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 passive aggressive moves. Why would you go to a press conference with AD and not have Russ unless you're trying to send a message? Unless you're trying to show we're together. We don't know what he's doing. And because if you don't think it's this deep, look at LeBron James across his career. When he was at the big three, the big three did the press conferences all together sitting next to each other. When he was in Cleveland, him and Kyrie sitting next to each other. Now it's him and AD. Is Russ not a part of that? I get more from what's going on with the Lakers from watching stuff like that. And I know press conferences give me nothing. There's also a point where LeBron's on the bench for whatever reason, looking at a stat sheet. And Russ is looking at him like, what are you looking at that for? Like, the subtle messages that he sends publicly, they're, they're, they're disgusting. 
That's what hurts the team. <laughs> oh my god, dude. That's what hurts the team. And if you don't, if you if you think I'm just talking crazy, if you think I'm just seeing stuff, okay, okay. Are you uh, are you auditioning for for a seat on first take? I'm always auditioning. Yeah, that's very first takey of you. No, but I, I do. Look, look but at I it. do think I because do think I've he's... seen every post game. <laughs> Russell does them on his own since the day one, and AD never like they. Uh, it's, if never mind. the point of it was to show a united, there front is no the united team, front. The three of them would have done yeah, it together. There is no united but, but, front. But that's just it. You they know, want like, them out. Right. They they thought that they listen. This is if we're really going to blame somebody because you know, Alex, you said earlier, you know, Rob Palenka should be gone. Don't, and maybe I'm alone in this, but don't you feel like LeBron orchestrated all of this? Like LeBron looked at Brooklyn and LeBron said, well, they got a big three. We got a big two. We need a third member to our big three. And then don't you feel like LeBron? And then just because he goes with what LeBron says, AD, don't you think that, that LeBron orchestrated the Russell Westbrook to the Lakers move? I mean, isn't he... The, he won't take responsibility for it because he says, I'm not in that business. But isn't LeBron the guy that made the decision? Hey, Russ is the guy. That's who we should get. Well, what can be fixed? What can be fixed? Firing Palinka is a fix. Because like, LeBron's not going anywhere. So it's like you want to you can blame LeBron all you want, but what's that going to do? Well, it doesn't do anything. But the point is, is that is that Russell West sounds good to blame LeBron. Well, I mean, Russell Westbrook is is a guy who that's who needs to go. I mean, in other words, if you looked at the entire roster and the and the organizational roster, who's the one person that you think getting rid of would do the most good? Russ. Okay, so then why get rid of Palenka? I'm not saying that Palenka shouldn't be fired because Palenka, just... you know, because he tore this team down. He had he actually had a a decent team that he built while he was with Magic. And ever since then, it's just been torn down. I, I don't it, think. But is it really him saying, "Hey, we stink. We gotta, we gotta tear this thing apart"? Or is does it, it matter? So he's just being scapegoated, is what you're saying? I mean, Frank's gonna get scapegoated. Why not Palinka? Frank will get sca scapegoated. Yeah. When he okay. will, he when? will be fired. When? At he the end of the year. I'm not gonna do it now. What's the mm -hmm. point now? You're not. You can do it now because now you don't even have guys in your staff like Jason Kidd who could have taken the job oh. when they fired Frank Vogel if they were going to. Now you don't even have the luxury of being able to do that because that was the plan all along. Mm. I'll tell you right now, um, the Lakers losing the way they did on a Tuesday night at home against the defending world champions on Super Bowl week, believe it or not, has commandeered the headlines of the Super Bowl. Mostly, I would say, because of what you were talking about yesterday, Browner, which is there is no major headline today. Today's Wednesday. You know, there is no major headline about the Super Bowl, but I will a, say this. You need a player to get arrested or something. Well, right. You need somebody to do something. I, yeah. I can't remember a Super Bowl that had less to talk about. Well, I, I can. There's I plenty mean, to talk about. It's only Wednesday, but I will tell you this. If the NFL is going to get back to the headlines, if you will, the story of Tom Brady, this is interesting to me. The story of Tom Brady possibly not really retiring. Scott Zolak is the uh, color commentator of the Patriots radio network. And he was a long time backup for the Patriots. And Zolak said on his radio show earlier today, Brady did not want to go back to Tampa Bay. So he retired. But what's happening right now is this is according to Zolak behind the scenes, the Niners and the Buccaneers are talking about a trade where the Bucks get Jimmy Garoppolo and the Niners get Brady and Brady gets to retire or play his last season or seasons for his hometown team. Brady's which, actually never retired. Right. He is not officially retired. No, he's never even said the word retire. And oh. his giant posts, yeah. never once was there a mention of retire. Okay, wait, hold on. We'll get back to Tom Brady and the highlight of the day and our biggest Cincinnati Bengal fan from the great friends all coming up. Stick around. This is Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. All right, great friends. It is a Wednesday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew. Coming up later on this segment, our man Craig Mizrak is going to stop by. Our longtime great friend, Sports Network Cincinnati Bengals reporter. Craig will stop by. The guy is like 
going through the roof right now that his Bengals are in the Super Bowl. We'll find out if he's actually getting to go to the game. Hey, um, Browner, we were talking about Tom Brady. Alex, you made a point that Brady has never actually said the word retired. Yeah. That is an interesting point. Um, what what has the language been? I, I guess I didn't pick up on that part of it because now the reports are, according to Scott Zolak, who used to be a backup quarterback for the Patriots, who's their longtime radio color commentator, Zolak says that Brady's not going to retire. He wanted to leave the Bucs organization so he could finish his career with the 49ers, which is his hometown team, and that behind the scenes right now, there are trade talks between Tampa Bay and San Francisco, Jimmy Garoppolo down to Tampa, Brady to San Francisco. First of all, are you guys buying it? Secondly, what do you think? And third, Alex, if you could give us, because you you brought it up, he never really mentioned retired. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now, and it's he says things like, it's difficult for me to write this, but I'm not going to make that competitive commitment anymore. I've loved my career, but now it's time to focus my energy on other things that require my attention. But he goes on and on and on and on and on and on. Like I read it already. Um, there's no word retire anywhere. Mm-hmm. And now who's going first take you? Look at you. The what do you mean? word retire is not in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then if you remember, uh, he also said this on his podcast the other day. Um, wait, this is the, yeah. He says, I don't know how it feels six months from now. It most likely won't change, but I try to make the best possible decision I can in the moment, which I did last week. So what if, what if this, what if San Francisco who just wants to get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo because they've got Trey Lance in the wings, right? What if they just symbolically traded and said, look, we're trading Garoppolo for Brady. It's really just getting rid of Garoppolo and we don't expect Brady to play. Trey Lance is our go-to guy, but at least we have Brady's rights should he decide. I mean, is that, do you guys think that's no. realistic? God, no? no. If I'm trading Jimmy Garoppolo, I'm getting something for him. He was in the NFC Championship game and he's been to the Super Bowl. I'm sorry. I'm not trading that for no symbolism. I'm trading that for picks. Some yeah. team's going to get duped into trading for Jimmy Garoppolo and regret that. Yes. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. 100%. I'm not saying it's a great idea, but I'm saying with what he, what you have to represent as trade value, he's got it. There's too many quarterback hungry teams in the league. I'm not like the Saints, for instance. You don't think they could trade him to the Saints? Now, they ain't got no money, but they got draft capital. Like, there are but teams w- that you can trade him to that have something to give you. But it would be interesting if the Bucks know that Brady doesn't want to play for them anymore and they expect him to retire and they need a new quarterback and they get Garoppolo and the Niners are happy with Lance because that's who they've drafted. Right. And they could clear the Garoppolo money and then they actually don't need something in return. I'm just saying in theory. Um, but you would know that John Lynch would have had a conversation with Tom Brady and would know one way or the other whether he's planning on playing or not. Right. If they make that trade, Garoppolo for Brady, as, as Zolak says they're going to, Brady's going to finish his career with the Niners. If you do it for a seventh round pick or some compensatory pick, yeah, I mean that's a great idea. That's fun. It's a good story. Everybody wins. But if you're just gonna if you're gonna do that straight up for Jimmy Garoppolo, that'd be well, I think it, nine for the 49ers to do that. I think it's gonna ma- It will matter what the Bucks do officially. Because if I'm the Bucks, I'm not gonna lose Tom Brady for free. Right. Exactly. I, I'm not gonna let him retire and walk away. I don't care that he brought me a ring. I'm not gonna. If I have the ability to get whatever I can for Tom Brady, I'm doing it. Give it to me. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you guys. All right, hey, listen, uh, Craig Mizrak's going to join us in a matter of moments, but before he does, to brag about his bangles, can we sneak in a highlight of the day, man? Can we do that? Sure. It's time for the highlight of the day, man. Do you want to get high, man? I'm just really high. Out of the day brought to you by Tory Holistics. Go to KaplanandCrew.com, click that Tory banner. You'll get 20% off your next purchase when you spend a minimum of $75 at Tory Holistics. Put the promo code LoveBowl in at checkout. Love Bowl yeah. at checkout, 20% off. Yeah. And and while you're at Tory Holistics, can I make a suggestion? Check out our friends from HVGC, Hellman Valley Growers Company. These are the former Marines. I've told you the story a bunch. You guys know it by now. Check out their website, HVGcompany.com. Former Marines in the Helmand Valley province in Afghanistan, most violent place on the planet at the time. They all come back. Everybody's got PTSD issues. Everybody's popping pills. One Marine, former Marine, or 
veteran Marine says, Hey, for me, I'm using cannabis, not prescription pills. The rest of these guys hear that and they go, wait, we want in on that as well. It started this whole cannabis related company. And now they've got all kinds of different products. They raise money for the battle brothers foundation. They put all their money back into research, uh, so that cannabis, because they're working with the U S government can be considered a, an acceptable form of treatment for PTSD. So it's a great story. It's a great product. It's a great cause. HVGC at Tory Holistics. You'll save 20% when you use our promo code Love Bowl. Grande, highlight. Yeah, the Padres need to sign A.J. Brown as soon as possible because they have his A.J. Brown, wide receiver. Titans, very good wide receiver. Also, All-American high school baseball player. He was drafted by the Padres. You guys talked about the story. But he is really, really trying to get a shot, at least making the going to spring training with the Padres. He's posting videos of him in the cage, and he's got a nice swing, man. Got that power, got the pop, it sounds like. Look like me. If I'm the Padres, if I'm the Padres, why not? Why not? Yeah, so I saw this video making the rounds on Twitter, and so this is a guy who's an NFL wide receiver, a very good one, who had an accomplished high school baseball career. And you say, Alex, that the Padres drafted him? Yeah, the Padres drafted him out of high school. Uh, so they own his rights. He went to Ole Miss, and uh, he decided to play football. Uh, but yeah, the Padres still own his rights. And and he, this is not like just him in the offseason just messing around. He no, actually really he thinks keeps he wants to. tweeting about it. He keeps, like, he keeps, like, tweeting stuff like, hey, Padres, I got pop. I got power. He really wants to be, like, the next Bo Jackson, Deion Sanders. I will tell you this right now. Go ahead. If the Padres don't do this, they should fire their PR person. This is the <laughs> easiest thing you could possibly do. You let this guy come to training camp, similar to the way the Rangers let Russell Wilson come and run around out there. But if this guy can hit, now you've got a story. Now in a season where you've got some anticipation, you got some eyeballs on you, now you get some of them football eyes on you. Now you but get remember- some of these ESPN stories following you following AJ Brown during camp and you be you get yourself in the wheel of conversation this is the e- this is a self-made story this is yeah. this is easy but remember when when Deion Sanders played for the Falcons and the Braves yes awesome. he was playing for the same city the two different teams in the same city right and you know was going back and forth between like playoff baseball games mm-hmm. and NFL regular season games yeah but could you imagine, like, if this kid were good enough to play both baseball and football, the, the travel problems that might occur? I'm not even trying to get that far. I'm just saying, like, hey, bring him in for spring training. For fun. Because, I mean, was this video all that impressive? There was a couple not pop really. A couple no. pop, there was a pop-up. There was a lot, like, lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't like he sounds like he has a nice swing. Cool. Yeah. Let's like let's go see him in his live pitching and let's have some fun for spring training. Yeah, I, I listen, I'm, Browner, I'm with you. Browner, I'm with you though. You know, that's why they drafted Johnny Manziel yes. a few years ago. That's why they had uh Garth Brooks one time Will in Ferrell. Pod- spring training. Right. Yes, Will Farrell doing a comedy bit through the Padres in spring mm-hmm. training. If you would like to just, if nothing else, just be part of the national conversation, yes. go sign this dude. Well, you got him, you got his rights. Bring him into spring training. I think it's a great idea. Okay, look, let me change gears here because I wanted to get a lot done in this segment. Um, You may remember years ago, the Great Friends Sports Network, um, the guy who covered the Cincinnati Bengals for us, Craig Mizrak, this guy is living the dream right now because his Bengals are going to the Super Bowl, and he's standing by right now. All right, so Alex, I mentioned this to you earlier in the show. Remember back in the old days of 1090 when the Chargers moved, we had the Great Friends Sports Network where we had all the listeners – pick an NFL team, and then they all became the the insiders. Well, Craig Mizrak became our Cincinnati Bengals insider, and now a lifelong Bengals fan, a man whose Twitter handle has something to do with the icky shuffle. My man's team is finally back in the Super Bowl. Here's our man, Craig Mizrak, biggest Bengals fan in the Great Friends Network. Craig, how you doing this afternoon, man? Scotty on cloud nine, like all Bengals fans and most of the entire city of Cincinnati. It's pretty surreal uh, what has happened the last several weeks after 31 years of pretty much futility. So, but you know, you, you is could cloud see- nine and Joe Burrow pun. <laughs> you mean Joe Shiesty or Joe Burr? 
Yeah. <laughs> I see the Burrow jersey behind you, Craig. Um, look, you know, the, the Bengals, they were, they were a good team during the season. Something happened at the end. You know, they beat Kansas City twice towards the end of the year. But this is the same Cincinnati Bengals team that lost this year to the Jets. So I'm curious, at what point did you as a Bengals fan think, we actually have a, a chance here? It's a fair question. Like a lot of young teams, it takes a while to gel. And I think you really started to seeing it, ironically, after the Charger game. If, if folks recall, that game was really weird. 24 to nothing, the Chargers came out to lead. And it was, uh, you know, Herbert versus Burrow. Bengals actually came back this, that game. And then the week after that, they had an equally tough game against the Niners. Both of those games were at home. And you could see the ingredients in those games of not just Burrow being able to be clutch and take them back, but actually the coaching staff maturing. And when you see the Bengals play or have seen them play over the last seven weeks, there is this control of the game that the coaching staff has with Burrow on offense. I wouldn't go as far as saying ball control, which is normally with rushing but they can keep their offense on the field for long periods of time. And in the case of the chiefs intentionally in ways that have ball possession and keep Mahomes off the field. So that is really to me, the inflection point of the season. And they've really, they haven't lost a game. They've lost the Browns at the end of the season, but they weren't playing anyone. It's last seven games in a row. Yeah. Hey, um, what is exciting for me as just an NFL fan, not a Bengals fan is to see the city of Cincinnati come back to life because for the, probably the last 10 years or so, anytime I've watched a Bengals game in Cincinnati, it's empty. You know, we, we had problems here in San Diego filling the stadium at a certain time. I would see what was going on in Cincinnati and go, that place is dead. That place is empty. But that city doesn't have a team to really cheer for. So you had to be hardcore to go to those games. As somebody who's got, you know, Bengals in their blood for 30 plus years, what has this done for the city of Cincinnati? Yeah, I mean, look, there, there's some – you can look at ironies all over the place. Uh, you know, Paul Brown, who many consider to be the founder of NFL, you know, of football, the only gentleman who was an owner of two NFL teams, the last season he was alive was when the Bengals were last in the Super Bowl against the Niners. He passed away that offseason, and Mike Brown, his son, took over the team. Well, since he's taken over the team, I think your boy Hank Bauer was on during when we were giving the great friend sports uh, updates saying when he would go to Cincinnati, he would see Mike Brown 666. Like there's been this feeling of a curse since he's taken over the team. You could say poor management. You have the Kajana Carter stories, the David Klingler stories of bad drafting. But really for the city, honestly, after going through Carson Palmer, and the hope that was there, but then getting Kimo Van Olhoffen in the knee on the first play of the game in the playoffs to then the Andy Dalton, AJ Green, Marvin Lewis trifecta of 0 and sevens, good teams with talent, but could not get over that hump. Listen, Cincinnati is a conservative town. As Mark Twain said, if you want to die, go to Cincinnati because everything happens there four years later. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's a town that almost doesn't know what to do now with this success after, like I said, just three weeks ago, we hadn't tasted victory. And so now having three consecutive weeks, it's a euphoria. They had 30,000 people at the, at the pep rally a couple of nights ago to send the team off. It's crazy to think what's going to happen if they come through and win the Super Bowl. I know Craig Mizrak is here. He was our reporter during the great friends sports network years. He covered the Cincinnati Bengals. For those of you that are listening on radio, he's wearing a Bengals t-shirt, a skyline chili baseball cap behind him. He's got a Chris Collinsworth Jersey, a Joe Burrow Jersey, a Jamar chase Jersey. And over his left shoulder, he's got a picture of Pete Rose standing on the bases, wearing a Cincinnati Reds uniform from the old, you know, big red machine days. So, I mean, hardcore Cincinnati. So Craig, let, let us all ask you this. It seems like America is rooting for the underdog, young kid, quarterback, fresh faced coach, rookie, superstar, wide receiver. America seems to be rooting for the Bengals. Is your team going to win? Look, I, I, I think they can absolutely win. And let me more, more specifically say how I think they're going to win. Okay. Um, the easy target, the easy things to discuss in this game is Joe Burrow and what he can do. The other easy thing to discuss is Aaron Donald 
and the Rams defensive line playing against what is genuinely a below average offensive line for the Bengals. The Bengals have found a way though, with three-step drops, quick releases. And I think you're going to see a lot more in this game, some screen play where they're duping the Rams defense in and you're seeing screens to P Ryan Mixon, even Chris Evans, who's the running back from Michigan who hasn't gotten as much PT, but he's, he's pretty shifty. Uh, and the other thing is, is as a Bengal fan, I'm sick of hearing about Jalen Ramsey, Jamar chase, has done his business all season. He set rookie records for receiving the combination of speed and strength. I'm not so worried about that. You can Ramsey many times plays one side of the field. They can they can put Chase up in the slot. They, they can move him around. And T. Higgins, you saw it in the Chiefs game, running those those early slants. And I'm sorry, at six four with Higgins, I don't even know who the scrub is. It's playing for the Rams at the other side of the field. I think he's. You know, from a pro football focus standpoint, I don't even think he's like five foot nine. And so I think they're going to have their way offensively. But remember, remember, in the previous games, as I pointed out, they have tried to have a ball control offense. I think with the Rams, they're going to air it out a little bit more. Um, I don't think they're as scared as Matt Stafford. I think anyone can assume that Stafford's good for at least one pick a game. And so those are the matchups I watch. And don't knock Eli Apple. <laughs> he has had he's been an easy target uh, to be picked on whether it was the expectations of him on the Giants and the Saints his pro football focus grade is higher than that of Jalen Ramsey's this year so I think uh, I think I could see easily and we can maybe get into some bets here Bengals are going to score over the 21 and a half points I see them win this game with 27 31 points in their defense which again they stop the run and make you play a passing game I, I think they can hold the Rams to 21, 24 points. So 31, 24. You know, our boy Browner, 21, 24. Thought, thought Joe Burrow was a bust. That's what he said. <laughs> yeah. I heard, I heard yeah that. And I ain't going to ever run from it either. I, right. had, good, look, I, had, I had good reason to. And look at Browner's success with Bears quarterbacks over the years. We come and we ain't worried about it. <laughs> we we've had far more success in Cincinnati Bengals. So I will allow you to dance, sir, because your song is on. But please, please <laughs> don't 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 have me go to the record that's been playing long uh, enough for y'all. So let's just let's bump the break now. How right, about right, I have a question. Moment. Craig, I have a question for you. We got to hustle up here. Um, you I saw you on social media go to Kansas City to support your Bengals. Are you making it into the Super Bowl? It's so fine. Yeah, look, as a good son would do, not only am I going, uh, I'm flying my father in uh from cincinnati so uh he's gonna fly into san diego tomorrow and we're gonna drive up i don't have the ticket yet because i've been i think judiciously waiting appropriately for prices to go down which they have for the listeners who have have been eyeing those up but we're gonna get two tickets we're gonna soak it all in we got a bunch of friends from cincinnati coming in and we're gonna have a great time is there a budget for tickets Uh, there's a budget. It started at not being 7,000 a ticket, which it was. I think there's some you can see in the bleeders now that you can get, even with the fees, you got to be careful. Those fees are like a thousand dollars in fees. And so you, 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 last night I was saying you could get them for under 5,000. So I'm balancing the, where the seat is and, and the budget there, but trying to stay under 10 G's yeah. for, the, well, for the two tickets. I mean, once in a lifetime opportunity for you and your dad. Hey, Craig Mizrak was our longtime great friend, sports network reporter who handled the Cincinnati Bengals, lifelong Bengals fan who's got his team in the Super Bowl in his backyard. And Craig, good luck to your Bengals. And uh, we'll be following you on social media. You want to give a shout out for your, your Twitter handle? Yeah, it's Icky Shuffle SD. Um, click, follow me on Twitter if you want. I keep it lighthearted, always having jokes. The two things I want to leave with, though, Scott, because the listeners I know care about this. For those of you who like to make action on the game, over 21 and a half Bengals. And if you can find the line still, I can't find it on Bavada. Over one and a half field goals for Evan McPherson. When the Bengals get to the 40 yard line, it is automatic with him. I also have a bet, which the odds have gone down on Jamar Chase being MVP for plus 2,000. So there's three decent ones to go find. There you go. Those bets at DraftKings. <laughs> what are you telling him, Browner? Do those bets at DraftKings, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Use DraftKings, man. I mean, yeah. use DraftKings and use promo our promo code, code great, great friends. friends. Right. You've got there it, Brown, go. man. Thank you, buddy. Uh, Craig, good luck to your Bengals. And if they win, let's bring you back next week. 
Love it. Love the sound of it. Thank you guys all for the time. Take a oh, lot of video. Take yeah. a lot of video. Yeah, do that. So that tag us. we can use it on the show. Yeah, tag us. We can use it on the show, dude. We'll do. All right. Hey, radio listeners, we got a piece out. Uh, Browner Lawhead coming up next. Um, Craig, what are you doing tonight, by the way? Uh, well, I told you I may uh, I may come by if I'm in town. See Lawhead. Uh, come on down. At- yeah. Come down. We're tonight with the comedy store, eight o'clock. The first 10 people that find me and say, great friends, I'll buy their ticket to get in. You don't need me to buy your ticket. You should buy tickets for everybody too. Uh, Craig, we'll talk to you soon, man. Thank you, buddy. Uh, Radio listeners, time to peace out. We will be there tonight at the comedy store, 8 PM. Find me, find Browner. First 10 people that say, great friends, we'll buy your ticket to get in. Come support our boy Lawhead tonight. Browner Lawhead on the radio from six to seven now. And we'll see you down at the comedy store. Everybody else. We have a separate finish for you on the podcast side. Peace out radio listeners. All right, guys, we're wrapping things up today. Uh, Kind of a weird show. Um, I don't know if everybody else is going to feel how weird the show was, but am I the only one who felt like today's show was a little strange little. You kept, you kept saying that it was weird and you were messing it up. Well, well, before Wait. I get to that, can I say something about our Bengals guest? <laughs> yeah, Craig Mizrak. Yeah, yeah, because you know I forgot his name. Of course, never. I knew think it. one of the most underrated things about sports is that mm-hmm. this this guy is going to create a lifetime memory with his father mm-hmm. going to this Bengals game. Mm-hmm. Even if they don't make it, if they do make it, this will be one of the stories that he will always remember, and his father will always have. And that is the beauty in sports that always gets washed away with contracts or overpaid guys or guys who want to be traded or them not hiring enough black coaches, blah, 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 blah. But one of the unseen beauties in sports is that it brings families and it brings people together. And I love him telling that story. You're, yeah, no, it's a cool story. Dad, you remember that one time I spent $10,000 to watch the Bengals lose? <laughs> but it, but the money is the, the money is irrelevant. The memory we, the memory will weigh so much heavier than the money. It won't even matter unless he yeah. goes homeless after the game. Yeah. Now Craig's Craig's a successful guy and uh, has made a bunch of money as far as I know. And uh, I think you're right, Browner, to have the ability to fly your dad out from Cincinnati to San Diego, and then to not have Super Bowl tickets as of Wednesday, but to say I'm watching the. <laughs> the the um the marketplace and i'm going to try and figure it out i think it was really cool too so hey look tomorrow I- i'm getting up early i'm going to be in la i'm going to figure it all out tomorrow hopefully it all works um i will just say one last thing for everybody who's still with us now tonight eight o'clock i'll be standing in front of the comedy store eight ish i'll be standing in front of the comedy store the first 10 people that find me and say great friends i will buy your ticket to get in to see lawhead tonight i'm hoping we can get 150 people out tonight I realize it's Wednesday. I realize it's a school night, but the number we're looking to shoot for is 150 people inside the show. So come on down, grab a drink, have fun. I know I've talked to a lot of great friends who are already planning on coming. I look forward to seeing everybody tonight. What do you think about that, Brown? I think it's a great idea, but I just had another idea that we'll talk about off the air. Is it for tonight? Yes. Mm. I mean, I can say it right now. Yeah, go ahead. Bring the TVs in your car. I didn't want people to steal the TVs. Oh, no, that's all right. That's all right. Yeah. All right. Listen, we got to go. We got a lot of work to do. Um, Hey, everybody tonight, Comedy Store, 8 o'clock. We'll see you there. Let's all get out there and support Lawhead. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for supporting all of our sponsors. Until tomorrow, hopefully from Radio Row in L.A., peace out.